once, the focus has always been on this prize, the Colonial Cup. Iowa Wireless presents Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. The Colonial Cup Championship, the Quad City Mallards versus the Asheville Smoke. Fuel, fire, desire. This is Game 5 of the United Hockey League Championship Series. championship in franchise history the team is it safe to say it's kind of more of a determined attitude than one of maybe anticipation well, all season long Ed uh, every day before we go into a game we believe that we can win and the guys today on the bus it's just a calm quiet uh, belief in themselves that they can win tonight's game and uh, they're not too excited they're ready to go and you're right they're very determined to win tonight's game well, they set themselves up for this possible cup clinching game with a victory in game four last night. We'll take a look at some of the action from yesterday as the Mallards got on the board with their first goal of the game. Vlad Serov put them ahead midway through the second period after the Mallards put up 27 shots on goal in the first. And Ryan, this proved to be a huge goal here, getting a two-goal edge. Well, we couldn't get that two-goal separation on game three, and that could have cost us the game. Here Hugo Proust scores one of the biggest goals all season long for us to make that 2-0 uh, cushion. This goal proves to be the game winner. Martin Alenka with his first goal of the playoffs with the Quad City Mallards. Puts Quad City ahead here 3-1. And the Mallards took a two-goal lead back. Here is Jason Ulmer, the first of his two goals on the night. Ryan, this kind of capped it off. Well, again, on the power play, if Dasha wants to play as undisciplined as they have, eventually we're going to strike. And there we were, Jason Ulmer with his first, and there was his second goal. For the Quad City Mallards with a huge effort, especially from the outset with 27 shots in the opening period. You see the shot total for the game in game four last night. A big game by the Stars. Vlad Serov with a goal and two assists last night. And defenseman Kelly Perot with three assists in the contest yesterday. The Mallards really controlled the tempo from the outset last night, Ryan. Can any team withstand that same kind of onslaught two nights in a row? Well, I, I certainly hope that uh, Balecki won't be able to stand up to as many uh, shots as he did last night. Uh, the key is, again, getting out very early, getting shots early in the first period, getting that pressure that we had last night, and just attacking from the, from the opening drop. We had a chance earlier to catch up with the head coach of the Mallards, Paul McLean, and get his thoughts on the keys to Game 5. Well, we certainly expect him to make some adjustments after the way we started the game last night. We really came out and established our pursuit game early, and... Uh, Put a lot of pressure on the net and put a lot of pressure on Balecki to make some saves, which he did. But uh, you know, we, we got to establish our game early. And uh, again tonight, we're going to have to, whatever team seems to establish their pursuit game first, seems to have the most success. And uh, it'll be very important for us to try to do that again in the first period tonight. Well, anytime you face an opponent that's facing an elimination and they're as good a team as the Asheville Smoke, you have to expect their best game. And we have to, in expecting their best game, we have to make sure that we come and play our best game. And our best players have to be our best players. And, uh, we have to prepare to do whatever it takes to win because the team is desperate uh, as a team that's about to be eliminated, especially at home, and uh, we have to make sure that we exceed their desperation. Now that we have to want to win the Cup more than they want to keep it alive. So the Mallards take in a three games to one series lead into the matchup tonight. Ryan, game four, a fourth win in the series, always the toughest one to get, but Asheville's been great at home all season. Know that in the last game of the year for them on home ice, going to be a tough one for Quad City. Well, you know, I think Coach McLean hit the nail right on the head when he said that we have to want to win the Cup more than they want to keep it alive. Uh, we do have to play desperate tonight, and hopefully that belief in we've had all season long will come to the forefront tonight and we can wrap up things tonight here in Asheville. We'll see what happens. Game 5 of the Colonial Cup Finals coming up. The Quad City Mallards at the Asheville Smoke. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Tonight's broadcast is being brought to you by Iowa Wireless, by Genesis Health System, by John Deere, by Rhythm City Casino, and by Tri-City Electric.
Welcome back live to the Asheville Civic Center in Asheville, North Carolina, amidst the Great Smoky Mountains. We are set for game five of the Colonial Cup Finals. There you see the Mallard starter in goal, Joe Demoline. He's won five of his starts in the postseason, bringing in a 2.17 goals against and a strong save percentage at 9.22. He makes the start, making back-to-back -back starts here in games four and five. Brent Balecki goes for Asheville. Has been outstanding in the playoffs. Shellac for 57 shots against the Mallards last night, but a 7-3 mark, a 260 goals against average. Steve Marofsky, who worked game three of this series here in Asheville, will work the fifth game. His linesman, Doug Wood, and Jason Rollins. Here we go, game five of the Colonial Cup Championship Series. The Mallards with the starting line of Martin Alenka at center, Hugo Pru on left wing, Mark McFarlane on right wing, Freddy Joban and Dan Bjornley, the two defensemen for Quad City. You see in the center face-off circle, Derek Kremen taking the draw for Asheville. He will have Bogdan Radenko and Olaf Jenstad as his line mates. Bob Raposa and Ryan Akiel work the blue line for Asheville, and we are underway. Mallard to the puck in their end. Joban sends it up the near side, but it's recaptured by Asheville. Raposa sent it forward. Jenstead trying to control it, but it's whistled for offsides as we are just underway. Ryan, the nerves a little bit more in a game like this. You get a look at the head coach of the Mallards, Paul McLean, his first season with Quad City, seventh as a head coach in the minors. than usual, but I think that was because it, it could have been the, uh, the calm before the storm, if you will. Uh, but watching the guys in the tunnel before they came out, the guys were bouncing around and jumping up and down, and it looks like they're uh, definitely experiencing a little bit of nerves. So let's see how we uh, settle those down in the first couple minutes here tonight. Pass up ice, deflected away at center. Mallards bring it back in, but Hugo Pru cannot run down the puck, and Akia sends it back to the near side, but McFarland there cycles it back to the far side. Alenka trying to race after it, but cleared ahead. This is going linked to the ice the other direction. Joban will get back and gets the touch-up, and will go back the other end for an icing call against the smoke, allowing both teams to change it up. Thank you. Look at the head coach of the Asheville Smoke, Pat Bingham, in his first season at the helm at Asheville. Also serves as a GM for the franchise and has really rebuilt this team. Last year they had... Uh, Keith Gretzky, actually both Gretzky's part of this franchise last year, and they've completely rebuilt it and gotten to the finals. Well, I think what they did was they brought in a bunch of players that are a lot more physical and play more of a team game than the, the previous Asheville franchise that was here. Uh, although they do play a little bit more of an undisciplined style than normal, they uh, have been very effective. As we score the goal, Chad Parker. That puck deflected in off the draw. And the Mallards get on the board. 45 seconds into the game. Quad City takes the lead. Chad Power with his fourth goal of the playoffs. Ed, last night we talked about how important Harold Hirsch is on the faceoff. Here he is once again winding up in the offensive zone, winning a faceoff right to Chad Power, who gets the shot away. Fortunately for us, it was tipped and ended up just floating over the top of Bilecki, as you see it. Looked like it hit Colborne. But here's that big face-off again by Harold Hirsch, and fortunately enough for the Mallards, we end up getting a lucky bounce off of Coburn, but nonetheless, it all starts with that important face-off win. And the Mallards score with 19.45 to go in the opening period. Asheville finds themselves down one early. Smoke at their blue line, look to work it in. Watson sends it over to the far side. Paul Johnson chips it off the far boards. And again, it's control. Watson's pass intercepted. Here come the Mallards the other way. Harold Hirsch leads the charge. He'll dump it in. Bounces back to Balecki's right. And they'll sweep it linked to the ice again. Goulash going back. It's the touch up and icing call against the smoke. What a blow that has got to be for Asheville. And Brent Balecki, because he's been so outstanding in the playoffs, let one in like that. It's got to get to you, doesn't it? Well, I think, I think for sure Brent Balecki has played uh, unbelievably so far for Asheville in this championship series. It's just one of those unfortunate bounce for him that happened to hit a player and go in the net. It reminds yeah. me much of uh, game three here Monday night in which we surrendered four goals and each one seemed to come on a sort of a lucky bounce for Asheville. So hopefully tonight with that same referee that we had from game three, maybe we'll be getting those lucky bounces tonight. 
Almer on the draw this time with Gibson and Serov of his line mates. They send it over to the corner. And there to get it is Alex Dumas, who clears it away. Goulash back to get it for Quad City. Check with the Mallards may or get control back. Gibson near side. The captain sends it up ice for Serov. Serov trying to get room. Played off the puck in the corner, and it comes all the way back near side. Again, rolling near length of the ice. Goulash will get back for it. Sends it back along the near side. Ruid, though, knocks it down. Ruid, their leading goal scorer in the playoffs. It's centered out front. Rolls in on Demoline and makes the save on a shot by Vitelli Andrea. Well, Ed, I don't know if tonight we're going to be coming out as, as fast and as furious as we did the previous night, getting 26 shots in the opening period. But as long as we continue to contain Asheville in the offensive zone, as we see our defensemen here doing a great job, really did nothing there. They got a weak shot on goal, but in essence, it's uh, very easy for Joe Dimline to stop it. As long as we can continue to play that sort of way in our own end, we don't need the 26 shots offensively to, to win this game. A drive for the right point. Deflects back on Demoline and makes the save an achiest drive. It'll look at the Mallards netminder acquired in February in a trade that we talked about for a long, long time. Rick Emmett, a long time Mallard, part of all five 50 win seasons and had a pair of rings, traded for a very popular figure in Muskegon and Demoline who won a cup with the Muskegon Fury in 99. On the faceoff, it comes to Aki, a shot for the point, saved Demoline, goes to the right side and Raposa sends it to Genstead. Kremen checked off the puck. And Raposa holds it in. Here's Pru on the far side. Will send it out. Finds Halenka at center ice, and it's whistled down for the two-line pass. Played almost two and a half minutes in Asheville, North Carolina. And the Mallards out in front, 1-0. You see Pat Bingham, as we mentioned earlier, rebuilt this Asheville team. They're in their first final in the Asheville, North Carolina era of the franchise. They moved here three years ago. Their second championship series in team history overall. They were in the Brantford, Ontario area and won the league championship in the league's infancy. Only the second year of then the Colonial Hockey League and they won the championship in year number two in 1993. It's the 10th year anniversary of the UHL. And there's an injured player off of the draw. Delay penalty call coming. The Mallards are fuming. Swungstu's touch is up. And you're going to see something here. Toporowski having to be restrained by his teammates. Then takes a shot from Benefield. And down in the ice is Harold Hirsch. That came off a face-off. And Ryan Lindsay, they've looked at this all series long. There's been some stick work off draws. And the Mallards have a man shaken up as a result. Well, it's... It's never a thing to see here, and especially in a final round series. But the Asheville, Asheville team just seems to be killing themselves with penalties here. Get they, another look. Right watch this. Watch the stick off the. Oh, it's a hand of the face. He punches Hirsch in the face, and you see another stick come in there as well. But it's Bruce Watson that goes to the box, and the Mallards have a power play. It's only a two minute penalty. And rightly so. I believe it's only a two minute penalty. Uh, Harold Hirsch, he's been one of those guys, a thorn in the Asheville side all series long. And as long as he continues to, to do that and drop penalties, you know what? We'll take 16 power plays again tonight if we can. <laughs> there are a whopping 17 of them in the second game, which was unbelievable, especially the way game one was tightly played. And they really didn't give themselves much of a chance in the second game of that series on the road. Mallards won that easy, 5-1. Not necessarily easy, but 1-5-1. Smoke got to within a goal in that game. It kept taking penalty after penalty. You thought they were going to stop after a while, never did. Mallards on the man advantage. Power play. Clicked last night. They had a pair of power play goals in yesterday's game. On the near side, it's tied up in the corner. Smoke looked to clear. Goulash got a stick on it, but couldn't hold it up. And it's actually played with a high stick. And that'll bring it back out to neutral ice. Mallards last night of the man advantage were two for nine. Good to see, Ryan. The power play, I know, is not necessarily struggled in the playoffs, but not quite what it was in the regular season. Well, that's exactly what we tried to work on all week long when we were in Greenville. Just getting more pressure at the net, trying to give Bilecki a little a couple different looks here from the points and shots. 
So, uh, you know, even though two for nine isn't absolutely terrific, it's still timely power play goals is, is the key in this championship series such as this. Face off back in the Mallard's end. Sent over to the far corner. Jinstead trying to race for it. But Serov able to play it away from him. And now Perot sends it up ice. Here is Jason Ulmer. The Mallards, rookie out of North Dakota, sends it in behind the net. Serov ridden down from the play from behind by Krimen. Perot holds it in left side. Gibson going after it. Comes near side for Serov who gets a shot away. Bounces right of the goal and in behind the net. It's swept out length of the ice. Mallards regroup, 60 seconds to go on this power play. Serov racing after it, but Akia sends it up, but not out of the zone. Goulash put it wide. Here's Perot to hold it in, but it's chipped out of the zone again by Asheville. Goulash up the other way at his own blue line. Mallards changing. Prue corralling the puck at center ice, sends it back to Goulash, and he'll send it into the right corner. Up the near side, cleared again by the smoke. And the Mallards look to regroup once again. 25 seconds to go on this man advantage. Here comes Prue, fought around a defender, worked his way to the left wing, drops a pass off, backhander hit a post, deflect to the right side. Halenka finds a through and a shot tonight sent back right side. Halenka up out front to Joban, sends it in front. Three seconds to go in the power play. Time winding down on it. Halenka chips it to his right to McFarland. Both teams at even strength. Joban right point, fires a shot, and a rebound saved by Falecki on a great stop. Well, he's performing miracles again tonight, Ed. That was... A terrific stop as the Mallards sustain pressure after getting the man advantage. Here's another look at this stop and a great glove save. Well, Freddie Joban gets the original shot, and the rebound ends up coming right to Hugo Pru, who absolutely rips it by Lecky with that big glove hand. Another look Takes again. Takes away another sure goal. He's playing well, and he's the reason that Asheville's still in this series. And McFarland going across the crease there for a little screen as Joban shot. Stepped this cool through that. Mallards out in front, 1-0 on the strength of an early goal. 15-19 to go first period. This is Iowa Wireless, Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. We are back. The Mallards out in front, 1-0 as an early goal tipped in and 45 seconds deep into the game of Quad City ahead, 1-0. Mallards lead this best of seven series, three games to one. And I believe that Harold Hirsch is heading the penalty box here for the Quad City Mallards. I didn't exactly see what happened, but nonetheless, I believe we'll be down two, two minutes here. Now Hirsch goes to the box. There was a face-off, and right after that, another stoppage. And it is for the penalty against Mallard center Harold Hirsch. I believe the call, it's going to be a two-minute slashing penalty. So Asheville gets a power play, which has been outstanding in the playoffs. They're at 21.5% for the playoffs, and they led the league in the regular season at 24.1%. Here come the smoke. Radenko backhands it to the far side. Jinstead looks for an open teammate. Radinko looking back for Jinstead, and it's sent linked to the ice the other way by Quad City. The Mallards special teams, we mentioned the power play. Ryan, the penalty kill awfully good last night, too. The smoke had a lot of chances on the power play. This got the one. Well, when you have two evenly matched teams such as these two teams playing, special teams usually wins the series. Here comes Nadeau as a two-on-one, a shot at his goal. The Mallards lead to nothing. Hugo Pro puts the Mallards out in front to zip, and Quad City leads by a pair. The Mallards led the league in shorthanded goals during the regular season and get another one as Hugo Pro scores on a two-on-one with Patrick Nadeau. Well, you see, the Asheville defenseman gets caught cheating in here, gives up a two-on-one. Cole brings the defensive for Asheville. What a great pass by Patrick Nadeau. Hugo Pro bangs it into the empty net, but what a beautiful pass by Patrick Nadeau, setting up his good buddy, Hugo Proof for that 
goal to make it a 2-0 lead here. Cruz ninth of the playoffs, and the Mallards lead by a pair. Minute five to go on the penalty to Hirsch, so Asheville's still on the power play as they dump it in. Far side, Andrev had it hop away from him, Mallards clear again. We talk about what a mental blow, the first goal might have been, and a tip and a goofy bounce, but when you give up one short-handed, it's got to be a little more disheartening. Krasovsky trying to move through, scores! One goal game again. of a good team. Bouncing back quickly from adversity. Foskey here just manages to get his stick on the puck and back, redirect it into the net. So they get back the short-handed one. That is his first goal, second point of the playoffs. On the near side, Kremen to play it back, then Holinka took it away, held in for a moment, but the Mallards get it back to center ice, repose it, dumps it into the far side. Yorley spins it over to the near side. McFarland banged into by Jinstead, but the Mallards are able to clear, and it's shot in again from center ice by Asheville. They are changing, and Raposa going deep in his own end, picks it up. Goulash pokes it free. Able to get over the line. Blue trying to fight through, and it tipped away from him. And Asheville gets it back. Smoke the other way. Mallard's changing. Big hit. Bro stood up the blue line against Watson. And the Mallards send it up the far board. Smoke get it back. They're not on side as they dump it back into the near side. Ulmer chips it to center ice, but it's shot back in. And Goulash goes to get it. Mallard's the other way. Sarah on to Gibson, just out of his reach. Almer going back, but Colborn touches up. And whistle will stop play, I believe an icing call against the Mallards. 12.41 to go here, first period. And the Mallards have a draw coming up at their end of the ice, leading 2-1. Jason Ulmer, UHL Rookie of the Year. He goes back to his bench as the Mallards change it up for a face-off to the left of Demoline. Coming up, Hirsch and Ruid head to head on the faceoff, and the Mallards have it back to the corner. Krasovsky and Toporowski battling for control of the puck. Along, along the board, it is deflected out in front. Mallards trying to clear it, and it's sent back out near side. A clear to head. Dumped into the right corner, and the smoke. Trying to send it up back near side. Okay. The whistle and the faceoff coming. 12-18 to go in this first period. Ballard's forward and rookie. Peter Armbrist, another North Dakota product. Teammate of a Jason Ulmer last year. Army won a championship a year ago. North Dakota, the NCAA champs, twice during his four years. Well, that's why Howard Cornfield will bring in a player such as Peter Armbrust. He's a great character guy. Uh, and yet he knows how to win championships. That's the reason he's on that bench right now. He's out there every shift playing with his, all his heart and soul. And that's why that's tape it's guys that need to win championships. Allard's control the draw. Here's Bjornley sends it up the far board. He's got crunched and a penalty coming. Bjornley shaking a bit. And a whistle will stop play as Bjornley got run into the boards and he is bloody. That was an absolutely vicious looking check. I didn't see if it was an elbow or a high stick or what it was. The hands but were high. We'll see if we can get another look. And here it comes. Oh, that's Jenstead terrible. Johnny. That's a terrible play. Number 61, yet Jedstead. And it looks like it's actually Dan Bjorni's head that's been cut open down there. That's just, there's no room for that. No room at all. That should be at least a four-minute, and I believe it should probably be a five-minute well, high-sticking no or an elbowing call. Wow. 
Mark Kitchborn, the trainer. You know, the he's NHL. have to take him off, I think. Oh, I, he's for sure. The yeah. NHL tries to cut down on any any hits to the head. They usually kick a player right out of the game. And that's that's the right call. You have to kick a guy out of the game for that. That's just deliberately trying to injure a man. No respect at all for him. No idea for what Jinstead is jawing about. He should be in there for at least four minutes, if not getting a 10 out of it. Oh, I believe he's been kicked out of the game, and that's really the right call. They're still having to separate some folks as the Mallards have taken a lot of abuse, Ryan, in this series. And now you were in this thing as well in game three. You can only take so much. The Mallards maintaining control right now, as is that man, although he's seen a lot in this series. It's been more than just a little irritating is Ole Jinstead heads out. He got a game misconduct. Well, you know, it's funny, Ed. Uh, you never want to see anybody uh, get hurt, take an elbow or a high stick, whichever it was there to the head like that. But I know the guys on the bench right now will gladly take as much as they can take as long as we can win a championship. Another look again. <laughs> elbow of Jinstead. It just drove Bjornley into the glass. And, and it turns out, Ed, to be a five-minute elbowing call. Wow. Which with it, I believe, will become a game misconduct. But that's really the right call. You can't allow players to be taking runs of players like that. Any number of things could happen there. Concussion, who knows? Well, that's one of the reasons why they've wanted to clean it up. The rash of concussions that have happened over the last several years. And but uh, that has not been atypical of the way this uh, series has gone. There's been a lot of hits like that. But that was one of the worst, at least it did. Some of the worst damage is you saw Bjornley badly cut and had to be helped off. They were using the whole towel on Dan Bjornley and hope that uh, he is okay as Mark hits for it and attends to him. Well, hopefully the, hopefully the worst, Ed, is that it is only stitches and, and that's all it is. Hopefully he has no permanent or concussion-type damage done uh, for a hit like that. But, but there's no room in the game for something like that. So the Mallards have a power play for five minutes on the major against Jinstead. Nashville breaks up a pass at center ice, and Kelly Perot back in his own end. Look to send it up ice, broken up briefly by Kremen. Serov weaving through traffic. Nice to beat Gibson does. Gibson lost it in the high slot. It comes back out. Mallers look to get it back. Perot to Goulash. Up ice. Here's Gibson. And Nashville again will clear. Ryan, you talk about a five-minute major and wanting to try to be patient through this, don't you? Well, you want to be patient, but you don't want to kill too much time. The, the beautiful, beautiful thing about a five-minute major is that you can score as many goals as you as you can possibly muster into the net without the time expiring. So, you know, you want to be patient, but you want to try and take advantage of that five-minute major as well and, and hopefully get two or three goals while, while you have the chance. A roll. Up ice, but it's broken up again by the smoke and clear. Moving the midway point to this opening period. Mallory's got a pair of goals. One early by Chad Power that was deflected in off a Nashville player, and then Hugo Bruce scoring shorthanded. Mallory's on a power play. Jovan sent it in right of the net. Well, they could try to play it, but it comes back out and criminal clear it away. You see the power play time on this major penalty against Jinstead. Try to feed near side. Alenka spinning around, tries to dump it in, get it in over the blue line barely. Goulash try to hold it, but it's cleared away again by the smoke. And the Asheville penalty kill has been strong in this postseason. Who tried to flip it to the near side, and a whistle will blow the play down off sides with 10.06 to go here in this opening period. Nashville penalty kill for the regular season was fourth best in the league and in the playoffs they've been at around 90 percent well they've been very good in this series so far and you know especially in this arena Ed, it's very hard to set up your power play as an opposing team coming in here it's so small that any missed passes or, or slightly bobbled passes 
uh, offensively will be jumped on quickly by the Asheville team and shot down the ice. It's very important when you're when you're playing such a small rink to make sure every pass is crisp, hard, and on the tape as to avoid any uh, any bad passes in which the Asheville team can pounce on the puck right away. They've got Blue Benefield now in the penalty box serving the infraction on Jinstead. Smoke clear again. See the Mallards in the power play for the playoffs now at 15.8%, getting a five-minute one here. It's their second-man advantage of the game. Rolls around to Hirsch near side. Now we're trying to find the dough in front, and it comes back along the near boards and cleared again. Quad City regrouping. Kelly Parole, three assists in the game last night. Off to Goulash, will dump it in behind the net. Nadeau to Perot. Perot sends it in front off the blocker of Balecki back to the far side. Asheville to their set far side. Again, they'll clear length to the ice. Mallard's the other way. Sarov with a shot. That deflected off Balecki. Perot sends it back in. Here is Sarov again. Center out front, Gibson shoots, he scores! Steve Gibson, the captain, puts the Mallards ahead by two, three to one, a power play goal, and the Mallards lead by a pair. What a great shot by Steve Gibson, pouncing on a loose puck in the slot area. I believe that Vladi Sarov was actually trying to go through the crease to Frederick Chauvin standing off to the side of the net when the puck was broken up and right on the tape of Gibson. See the goaltender, Balecki, watching for the pass. It bounced in front. And that's exactly what happened. Steve Gibson right on the doorstep, ready to pounce on any loose pucks. And he buries another one top shelf. How many times have we seen him do that this year, Ed? That was a quick trigger on that, too. Ulmer will get an assist. It's the lone assist right now for Ulmer. The Mallards move it back in. Still on the power play. A turnover. Here come the smoke and Ruit. Trying to get around the defender. Shot it wide. And the smoke try to hold it in. But it's cleared back up the far side. Mallards dump it into the right corner. Off of the far side, Radinko. Is it taken away from him by Serov? Homer sends it in front. And it's cleared by Radinko over the blue line. Gibson's got a quick trigger, doesn't he? Oh, every time he gets that puck in the slot, he's got a cannon from that area, and it's it could always go in the net. Just a quick, quick shot once he got that loose puck in deflection. Mallard's still on the man advantage, though, on the five-minute major against Jinstead. Still have 40 seconds to go on this power play. Andre have intercepted. Mallard's get it back. Goulash works it ahead. And now along the near side boards, McFarland. Sends it over toward the corner, but cleared again by the smoke. Now the Mallards now put a two-goal lead back here in Game 5 in the opening period of play. Toporowski near side. And it to the wing, gets it back along the point. Now Pru goes in behind the net. McFarland battling Dumas, gets it in the corner. Trying to send it in front, bounced off of Tom Wilson. And along the left point, Goulash will hold it in. Shot from there, save made by Balecki to stop the clock. Mallards out in front, 3-1. Quad City with a two-goal advantage. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. We are back at the Asheville Civic Center. Mallards out in front by 2-3-1. Both teams now at even strength. Harold Hirsch. It's set for the faceoff. This is a, much like the same setup that scored the first Quad City goal here. Two men in the slot here. Armbrust in the slot with power behind him. Back to power. Couldn't get a shot this time, but Astro will take it out of their zone. Paul Johnson picks up the far side. Hirsch chips it out of the zone. Got hit hard from behind. Asheville back at their own blue line, trying to get something going. Toporowski breaks up a pass, and Armbrist will dump it in. In behind the net, Ryan Akia. 
He looks to send it up ice. Here come the smoke the other way. Benefield got caught off sides. Mallards again held their ground at the blue line. Mallards with a two-goal lead. Out in front, 3-1. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Tonight's game brought to you in part by John Deere. A thank you to John Deere for making these broadcasts possible back live to the Quad Cities. So thanks again, John Deere, for sponsoring the telecast and for being a corporate partner of the Quad City Mallards for now six seasons. Face-off coming up. This is at the Mallards into neutral ice. Face-offs even at this point. Oh, the Mallards win this draw. Gibson tries to work it in. Parole hits it back, sends it forward, and it's carried in offside. Face-off's a key, Ryan, because in the two regular season meetings, that was one big standout that Asheville was able to uh, control the face-offs, both in this building and at the game at the mark back in February. Well, a lot of, a lot of things are made up about the face-offs. Sometimes you think it's just a meaningless part of the game. In your actuality, a team like us, we want to win as many face-offs as we can because we have such mobile defensemen that they really start a breakout from any part on the ice. So if we can win as many draws as we can, it gives our offense more chance to handle the puck, which in turn will give our forwards better opportunities to score goals. It was surprising in those two games because as dominant as the Mallards have been at times in the on face-offs, there was one team that had their number in a couple of games. But it hasn't necessarily been the case here through the finals. Puck sent ahead along the far side and into the seats up the far side to stop play. Mallards out in front, 3-1. to one. Fuel, fire, desire. 2001-2002 Mallards season tickets are now on sale. You can beat a price adjustment for next season by purchasing your Mallards season tickets for next year now. It's not too late, folks. You can call the Mallards office at 309-764-7825 for 2001-2002 season tickets. There's a face-off. To the right of Balecki. Comes back out to the left point. They try to beat Jobin. Pass broken up. Raposa the other way and it knocked off his stick. Kremen trying to play it ahead. Mallard trying to get on side here. Jobin at his own blue line ahead to Halenka. Now Prue trying to work through traffic. Couldn't get around Colborne who chips it up the far boards and another Mallard gets hit. The play will continue. As there's a shaken up Quad City player, I believe it's Halenka that's down, and he is now up on his knees. Well, unfortunately for us, that I think that that might have been the stick of Paul Johnson that ended up catching Martin Halenka uh, in his face there. There was an Astro player around, but I think when Paul Johnson went to hit the opposing Astro player, he might have caught Martin Halenka by accident in the face with his stick. Another look, yep, there it is. Yeah. Thankfully, it looks like Martin's okay. Paul, Johnson, Paul Johnson's going to be a doctor anyway. So we'll see if he can fix you right back up. Marty. Maybe he was trying to give him a little cut so he could try and stitch up himself. Who knows? A little practice for the future. And the good news, Olenka able to shake it off. Mallards with a new group out there. We'll take a face off. This will be at the Asheville end of neutral ice. Swung stew will dump it in. Mallards back for him. Comes out of the zone as it gets by Muldoon. And the Mallards dump it the other way. Perot will dump it in and run it to by Swungstu. And it's taken back by Asheville from the corner. They work it out of their zone. A blast one in from center ice. Demoline there to stop it. A little pushing and shoving there in front of the net. Swungstu chopping down on top of Rowski's stick. A fuel fire desire is what it takes in the playoffs. The Mallards 2001 playoff souvenirs are now available. Visit the Mallards nest in downtown Moline for Quad City Mallards playoff souvenirs and Colonial Cup Finals merchandise. Mallards trying to gun for the Colonial Cup championship here tonight, leading this best of seven series three games to one. They can close it out with a victory here on the road against the Smoke, and they lead 3-1 with 5-11 to go here in the opening period. You know what? It's funny. As I watch the NHL playoffs here, as, as our playoffs have been going along, whenever there's a little 
stoppage of play in front of you, either end, either a uh, goaltender. You know, there's, there's not all that pushing and shoving and garbage here that Asheville seems to want to play. It's just, to me, it's just there's no place in, in the game for it. It just, it absolutely ruins the game. Seen it all series. You see the advantage for the Mallards in the shot department. They should have dumped it forward. Andreev sends it in. Demoline blows it down behind the net. Goulash tries to work it out against Ruid. They get it back. Andreev trying to send it back, but Gibson will take it away. Has Sarov with him, but can't move it in. Homer will dump it in, though, from outside the blue line. And Dumas goes back to get it. Andreev now at center ice, looking for a teammate as his team is changing. It's dumped back in. Goulash from behind, the own, uh, behind his own net will start it up ice the other way. Goo. Up near side as McFarland tried to corral it, able to center. Now left side, a shot saved made by Bolecki. What another big save. We haven't really tested Bolecki lately, but that was a nice big save that he uh, came up with on that play. As Hugo Prue was bearing in on him. Martin Holinka with a great little pass to him here. Sends Hugo in in a semi breakaway and Bolecki comes up big again. We haven't tested him a, a lot lately, have we, out there, Ed? Not a lot of shots, but a little quiet, a little bit of a lull over the last several minutes. 4-11 to go here in the first. The face-off in front of him again. And the Mallards to keep it in the zone. Rodinko trying to get it out of there. Adelon at center ice brought in. Again, Rodinko fires a shot blocked by Johnson. And sent up ice by Toporowski. That may have gotten its way into the seats with 3.57 to go here in this opening period. Now you can sign up to be a part of the Mallards team next year with a corporate partnership with the Quad City Mallards in 2001. Call 309-764-7825 for information on how to be a part of the Mallards team in the 2001-2002 season. For corporate sponsorship information, again, contact the Quad City Mallards at 764-7825. A lot of Mallards fans made this trip a long journey from the Illinois, Iowa area and the Quad Cities along the Mississippi River to North Carolina and the hills of the Great Smoky Mountains. A lot of Mallards fans here. One fan estimated it was in the neighborhood of about 300 that are wearing the maroon and green. Wow, it's an amazing sight to watch. As I said last night on last night's telecast, you know, just the fact that we had one or two people come all the way out here and show up is amazing. I can't believe how many people are here. There's, uh, you know, I, I've talked all year about how great it is to play in, in Quad Cities and have the fans that are actually there cheering for us. But when they actually come all this way to to cheer us on and give us a little extra support. I tell you, the guys down at ice, uh, they really appreciate it. It's an amazing sight. There's a lot of Mallards fans that are right behind the Asheville bench. <laughs> no place I'd rather have them at. <laughs> kind of rub things in a little bit. Face off to the right of Timmeline here. This is Hirsch and Bruce Watson to the draw. And the Mallards will control the face off. Perot and Benefield with a little jostling behind the play as Asheville will send it back in. Choban up the board. The hitting starting to pick up a bit from Asheville's side, still looking to try to uh, make some big hits along the boards as play continues on. Watson kicks it up the far side. Power trying to play it ahead, finds her. She chips it over the blue line. Benefield and Perot still jostling behind the play, and a whistle will stop the action and see what they've caught, if anything. 316 left in the period. You see Bruce Watson, who had over 400 penalty minutes during the regular season. Well, he's doing his job out here. I don't know if it's exactly what Coach Pat Bingham wants him to be doing, but hey, you know, he's effective, I guess, uh, at what he does, trying to annoy uh, a couple guys on our team, mainly Hale Hirsch out there. And of course, uh, Kerry Toporowski, that's the other guy he's, he's trying to get under his skin. But, but Topper's been doing a great job this year. He's, uh, in these playoffs especially, he's been very, very disciplined. 55 penalty minutes uh, so far this season. It's still, he, or sorry, in the playoffs. This championship series, he's turned his back on, on almost everything, and that's that's the mark of a, of a disciplined team. 
sometimes they say, you know, being tough is putting up all those penalty minutes, but tough, uh, tough in a championship se season, uh, sorry, a championship season is some sometimes turning the other cheek and taking that punch to the head and, and doing it for the, for the goodness of the team. That's playing tough, too. And, and the penalty minutes, while there's something you can talk about and, it, and something that kind of shows sometimes the toughness, it, it kind of makes him a little underrated in the defensive skills that he does bring. He does bring a lot. You have to play in this team. You have to do a lot. You have to have a lot of skills and a well-rounded hockey skills to be here, don't you? That's for sure, Ed. On the far side, Prasovsky battling for the puck as it comes back out. Andrev tries to bring it in. Serov plays him off the puck. Big collision there. They topple to the ice. And Toporowski from the crease trying to send it out. And again, Prasovsky and Johnson battling near the net over in the corner. A battle on for the loose puck again. Toporowski has it tied up, kicks it ahead. And now Ruid with his stick on it, trying to play it up the far boards, and Serov will chip it away. And as a two-on-one with Gibson, Serov to Gibson, fires his shot, and it's high and wide, and out of play with 2.21 to go in this first period. Well, there's Gibby again, standing sort of in the slot area. Hey, every time he gets the puck around there, he's a threat. We already saw him put one top shelf earlier today, and again, he gets another good chance. Unfortunately for, for Steve, I believe the defenseman slid in front of his shot, so we had to go very high with the, with his attempt, and it just ended up being too high. You look at Serov setting him up. With the defenseman sliding like that, Eddie had to try to lift it over top of him. 13 assists in the postseason coming in, led the team. He has a, a goal already tonight. That put the Mallards ahead 3-1 That on a power play. In behind the goal. Asheville looking to clear their own zone. Mallards dump it back in the other way. Brett Colborn, haven't seen him possession of the puck much tonight. Gets it to center ice and Kelly Perot takes that away. Roll back to the near side. Colborn is surprisingly quiet. Center ice, it's tied up there. Dumped ahead. Goaltender. Lucky had to come out of the crease to play it. Near side, they try to feed Raposa. He'll dump it into the far side or through there waiting for it. Sends it up the center. And it's brought in offside. And Benefield knocks Perot in the head. And this will get talked about come together in the corner. They'll separate that duo with a minute 35 to go in this opening period. I believe we're going to have matching minors here to Benefield and McFarland. Now once again, you can sign up and be a part of the Mallards team with a corporate sponsorship. Call 309-764-7825 and take part in a lot of fun Quad City Mallards packages for the 2001-2002 season. Great promotions, as well as some great exposure opportunities and a whole lot more Quad City Mallards sponsorships. Mark McFarland in the box for Quad City. And in the box, Bennett Field for the smoke. Well, matching penalties, as you mentioned, Ryan, and Mallards try to protect the 3-1 lead. Bennett Field is going to go ahead and go off with less than two minutes on the clock. Roughing minors on both as Bennett Beal will take an early exit to his dressing room. Face off coming to the Quad City and Neutral Ice, and Mark McFarland will go ahead and exit as well as the four on four gets underway. Hey, Ryan, what do you do when you sit in the locker room before your team gets there? Well, that's a hard question. Uh, you know what? I don't, I'm not usually one of those guys that's in there. Uh, too often. I suppose you just sort of start going into your normal intermission routine, get some water, get some juice, uh, get any treatment you might seek out. So uh, That's never happened to you then, has it? Uh, not, <laughs> not too often, not too often. I didn't know if you wanted to go there or not. <laughs> Here's Hirsch who sends it up ice the other way. Mallard's trying to get control along the near boards. It's taken away by the smoke. Asheville breaking out the other way. Ruid trying to split two defenders, can't. And Akia trying to send it back in front as it deflected behind the goal. Ruid with a shot from an odd angle. Demoline trying to stop it. Net comes off or is 
partially dislodged as Demoline has it at his feet. That was a scary moment there for a second, Ed. Well, it ruined from a weird angle in the corner, able to send one on net and almost found its way through. Here's another look. At the confines of this arena are so that the, sometimes the goaltender, it, it, it's a lot harder for him to get his angles correct. We saw last game uh, a couple of, of weird goals for Asheville in uh, Redenko's goal and Crimmins' goal where they just sort of threw the puck at the net and it just sort of found its way in. A lot of times it's hard for a goaltender to come here who hasn't played here all year long and find his angles as the arena is that much smaller and uh, therefore he can't find himself square to the shooter in the same spot as he would in, in let's say, a bigger arena. Allards control the puck behind the ash or behind their own net as Perot will start it up the other way. This rink is listed at 185, but I'm not too sure about that one. It looks like a much smaller and tighter surface than the mark, which is 185. Ulash gets an icing call. And he'll back the other way for the face off. Look at the head coach of the Mallards, Paul McLean. Only one season at the helm with the Mallards, Ryan, but well, what an impression he has made in the fans in the area. Oh, it's amazing, you know, as you see a sign of uh, <laughs> of him up there, it's uh, it's amazing, you know, it's what this team needed, it's what this what this city, I think, needed uh, in the fact that, you know, he was a no-nonsense type head coach. Uh, he's, he's treated us with, with great respect all season long, and in return, I think the players have given that respect back to him and performed very well for him. You get a look at what his uh, his NHL career, his stellar NHL career that included an NHL All-Star game in the mid-80s as well while with the Winnipeg Jets. Radinko looking to bring it out. Radinko, a former Mallard, hits it across center ice. Checked as he brought it in, and Ulmer gets the loose puck. Seroff trying to backhand it out as it knocked down. Kremen can't get a shot away, and Perot steals it. A vice finds Seroff. Seroff in over the line. Sights him the defender. Lost the stick, but kicks it on net. And it's picked up by Alex Dumas. Sends it up the other way. Deflects off the far boards. Closing seconds of this first period. Goulash will run off the clock to Perot. And that'll do it for the first 20 minutes at the Asheville Civic Center. Three goals in the opening period for Quad City, Ryan, as the Mallards have a 3-1 lead at the end of the first break. An early goal, the Mallards maintaining that two-goal margin at the break, Ryan. Well, we asked, uh, you asked me earlier in the telecast, Ed, if I thought there'd be some nerves out there. And I think perhaps that goal by Chad Power, 45 seconds in, may have calmed a lot of the nerves uh, on behalf of, the, of my teammates. So. You know, it turned out to be a pretty good period for us. Hopefully we can continue in the manner that we've been playing and stay out of that penalty box and keep that offensive pressure going uh, by Lecky. A quad city will head to the dressing room. You see there their 3-1 lead at the first intermission. Back with an intermission report. The Mallards up 3-1. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Welcome back to the Asheville Civic Center. The Mallards lead at the first intermission, 3-1 to one over the Asheville Smoke. Quad City, uh, with the early goal, they got a deflection in uh, early on, 45 seconds into the first period to take an early lead. Asheville battled back after the Mallards had a two-goal margin. Quad City came back, or Asheville came back to pull to within one, but the Mallards have the two-goal lead back intact with a 3-1 to one advantage at the first intermission. We are with Mallards forward, Martin Alinka, who joined this team before the finals began. Martin, have to be very pleased with the way this game started as uh, you've got a two-goal lead to the first intermission. How big a lift was it to get an early goal and the way you scored it very early on tonight? It was, it was huge. It was, uh, we, we had two, two quick goals on them, and we, uh, although we had scored right away back, I can't really hear you, but... Um, was like it was a was two goal lead and we really needed a quick start that helped us out. We let him back in, but we scored a third goal that and we're back in the game and hopefully we can win a goal game. Yeah Martin uh, the getting that two goal advantage has to be big too. You responded to that 
uh, to them cutting that lead. You talk about the first early goal being a boost. Having that two goal lead, is that a comfort margin? Or I know you still have two periods of work to go, but what's the feeling like with a two goal lead now at the first break? Well, they say in hockey, two goal lead is the hardest to keep. So we're going to have to keep on going and try to get the third goal. Uh, they're a good team. They play very physical. And we're going to we're gonna have to do everything to score a third goal. We'll see what happens. We're going to have to stay with our game and stay focused. And uh, we'll see what happens. Martin, again, it uh, seems like it's a little physical down there right now. It seems like Asheville might be playing a little bit more undisciplined than they did in the last couple games. How's it feel out there right now, uh, and can you guys stay as disciplined as you have in the first period? Well, the ref lets it go a little more than the last game, but I, I guess that's all right. We're going to have to get actually used to it, and uh, just we, we just got to continue, focus on our ga game plan, and see what happens. Martin Alinka, congratulations. A couple of days ago, signed by the Washington Capitals. When did you hear the news that the Capitals had signed you, and what were your feelings or emotions in learning that? Well, it started right before I came here. I just didn't want to say anything because it would be, uh, it would be a big uh, big distraction for the team, so I figured I might as well just keep it secret and just uh, see what happens with it. Uh, it I, everything, well, went, everything went on. I, I heard from Washington three, four times before everything got done. Uh, I heard I heard the final news on Wednesday night. Well, Clinker, congratulations on that on behalf of us and all the great Mallards fans, and thank you for the visit. Thanks a lot. Martin Halenka joining us uh, during our uh, intermission report. Ryan, you guys had to be thrilled for him. I know you were, he was a teammate of yours last year, a great guy. He's come a long way from Division Three hockey now to the NHL in a 2002 contract with the Caps. Well, he, he certainly has come a long way. It's uh, it's amazing to see uh, just how how far along he's developed his skills. And you know, it's been it's been great. You know, uh, Howard Cornfield saw something in him early on in his career uh, at Oxford College, and brought him along. And uh, Matt Shaw last year, the two that he showed uh, uh, he played under under Matt last year, uh, really helped uh, Martin out a lot. And this year, he's just made leaps and bounds, and it's it's great to see him uh, making that next step now. Martin Olinka, a big key last night, including the game-winning goal as the Mallards took Game Four last night. They lead Game Five, three to one, here at the Asheville Civic Center. We're back with more of our intermission report and a conversation with the Commissioner of the United Hockey League after this commercial break. This is Iowa Wireless, Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Welcome back to the Asheville Civic Center in Asheville, North Carolina. Mallards lead. 3-1 over the Asheville Smoke here in Game 5 of the Colonial Cup Finals. Ed Beach now joined by the Commissioner of the United Hockey League, Richard Brassal. First of all, thanks for the visit. Uh, kind of a fun time for you, isn't it? Uh, this is the championship round and a chance to hand out the Colonial Cup, at least at some point for the next three days, if not tonight. At some point, possibly tonight, but it is. It's an exciting time for the league. It's an exciting time for the Mallards and the Asheville Smoke and all of their fans and the hard work that they put into this entire season. I know that... Uh, while it's an exciting time, it's also been a lot of work, maybe more work than you had anticipated. Uh, this series has, well, to say it's been chippy may be a little bit of an understatement. It's been a little rugged at times. Uh, is that kind of an ongoing concern of yours uh, throughout the course of play, the way this one has gone? Well, it's been a concern of mine. It's been a concern of Mitch Lamaru, who handles player discipline. You know, when you look at the best two teams coming into this championship round, we thought it was going to be just great hockey the entire series. Unfortunately, we've had some incidences that have taken place that you know, not only gives a sour taste not only to the fans, but to everybody in the hockey world. If the guys would just go out and play hockey, as you've seen in a number of these games so far, this, you know, this series, it's a great you know, caliber of hockey. The guys are out there playing hockey. When they get into the extracurricular activity, the stick swinging and the high hits to the head, it just can't be tolerated, and it's unfortunate. It's, it's something that we'll take a, a, a long, hard look at over the summer. And I, I constantly have to keep that in mind, that the player's safety is, is paramount. It, it was, I know, a point of emphasis in, in the preseason. Uh, has it gotten to the point where, as you've let them play throughout the course of the season, it may have gotten away a little bit or, or in the finals? Or how do you try to reassert it? Because I know it's something that you wanted to do at the beginning of the year and cutting some of uh, uh, those kind of things out. Uh, they seem to kind of resurface. How do you how do you force it back now? Well, Ed, it's not a matter of that they resurface. I mean, you look at we we played close to 600 games, including right. playoffs, and we're talking about three or four games out of the 600 that you have something like this, and and that's what's the most unfortunate. We are enforcing it. 
you know, the referee can't do any more than what he's already done. Mitch Lamaru can't do any more than the suspensions. They took their captain out of the series. He's not playing. Sean Ulrich is out of the series. You know, they chose not to play hockey. That was their decision when they did what they did. The league has to take a stance on it, but it's unfortunate. You can't use the analogy, one bad apple spoils it for everybody. At least I won't allow that to happen because when you look at the caliber of play and you look at the guys that are out there playing their hearts out, you know, what can you say about Belecki? Belecki is, I mean, yeah. saw more rubber last night in the saves that he's made tonight. The guy's playing with his heart and soul. He's carrying the team on his back single-handedly. And that's what you have to take the positives out of, out of whatever unfortunate situations that might occur with these stick infractions or the guys that don't want to play hockey. My attitude is if they don't want to play hockey, they don't have to be here in the United Hockey League. We're not going to tolerate it. They can go play somewhere else because the guys that do want to play hockey, which represents about another 260-some-odd players in this league, clearly showed the fans and the people in hockey that the caliber and the parity in the league was there for a reason, because they played hockey and they did not do these types of things. Well, kind of too bad, too, in that this is Asheville's first trip uh, to the Colonial Cup Finals, and, and great to have another city involved uh, uh, in this great event. When you did this East-West split, this kind of what you had in mind, get another team uh, in this championship series and see what it's all about now in May? Absolutely. You know, Ed, far too many times, you know, Quad City's been to the final six years. You, you look at the Flints, the Muskegons, the Quad Cities, it just seems to be a repetitiveness that has taken place. And then the East, the Eastern Division has been one one division that notoriously the last four seasons has been viewed as a weak, a weak division. You take a look at what Asheville did, what Adirondack did, what New Haven did this year, the, what Knoxville did in the Eastern Division. That's what we were hoping for by by putting these divisions together, the conferences, that we would end up ultimately a Western Division playing an Eastern Division, and that's what we did. And, you know, they, by the luck of the straw, so to speak, the two best teams with the two best records made it to the final round. You can't write a better script than that. I would have hoped that we would have seen better hockey throughout the start of this series and continuing here into Asheville. I thought Monday night they played a much more disciplined game being Asheville, and you saw some good hockey, but, you know, it's unfortunate. Oh, but a great finals and a great event as we have once again this year. We thank you for the visit. Mallards lead here in game five of the first intermission, three to one. We're back with more after this commercial break. This is Iowa Wireless, Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. We are back. The Mallards out in front, three to one. As the Mallards uh, have a two goal lead at the first intermission. They got an early goal in the Asheville able to come back. They got back in this game uh, after being behind 2-1, or after being behind 2-0, they got a quick goal to get back in it. But uh, once again, like we like last night, the Mallards had an answer, Ryan. Well, you know, it's uh, I've said many times that it's a mark of a good team if they can uh, score quickly and, and, re and reply quickly to adversity. Asheville is a good team, and they came right back down after we made it 2-0 and, and scored right away. Again, we're a good team, and we came back down and made a 3-1 game. So... You know, as long as we continue to uh, respond to the adversity as well as we have so far, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be successful tonight. Let's take a look back at uh, the scoring in that first period. Here is the first goal. It took a wild bounce off a shot on a faceoff from the point. Chad Power had that bounce in and on the assist. Harold Hirsch, who won that faceoff, and that got the Mallards on the board at 45 seconds of the first period. You look now at goal number two. Just a beautiful pass shorthanded. here. Just a beautiful pass here by Patrick Nadeau. Shorthanded goal, and it's such a huge goal again by Hugo Pru. But really, the play made there was uh, Patrick Nadeau's beautiful, beautiful pass to him. The Mallards led this regular led the, the UHL in the regular season in shorthanded goals, and got that one that put the Mallards ahead a two to nothing. But then Asheville was able to get back on the board with this power play goal, Ryan. Well, it's a bit of a broken play, and Profoski obviously just. Ends up picking the puck up from Goulash, who had made a good defensive play to knock it away from him. Kowalski ends up putting it in the net. But, uh, you know, it was a good defensive play, but, you know, Asheville's a good team, and they, you got to expect that they're going to bounce back that quickly. So it had momentum on the smoke side for a little while, but that didn't last long as the Mallards reasserted a two-goal advantage. They got back the shorthanded goal, but then here comes another one for the Mallards. Well, Vladi Sarab just trying to throw the puck across to Frederick Joe Ben, and it ends up on the stick of, of Steve Gibson. And from that angle, he's going to bury it every time on you. He's got a great wrist shot, and he ended up uh, putting it top shelf. You can see him do it all year long, and it's another big goal for Steve Gibson. Now Gibson getting the goal. Ulmer was credited with the assist for the moment. We'll see if that holds up as they may take another look at that. But uh, uh, it's 
it's got to be disheartening for Asheville, Ryan, because the Mallards are hard enough to play against. But when you're getting a couple of bounces, it's got to be that much more frustrating for the opposition against you. Well, you know, I think we experienced our share of bad bounces on Monday night's game, game three here in Asheville. And tonight, maybe we're getting back at those bounces. They do say that hockey's a game of bounces, and uh, you, you take the good with the bad. And we had the bad happen to us in game three. Maybe the, maybe the good's coming for us tonight in, uh, in game five. Two more periods to go, though, and Asheville has to know their backs are against the wall, and on home ice, you have to expect them to step up uh, one or two more notches now, don't you? As Barton Alinka alluded to, a two-goal lead can be tough to keep sometimes. Oh, I see no reason why Asheville won't come out flying here in this uh, second period. Uh, you know, they're a, they're a great team. They've responded well all year to adversity. Hopefully we can respond to that uh, challenge that they'll present here in the second period. Well, one key may be to stay out of the penalty box, won't it? Because that five-minute major then came back to hurt them when Gibson got that power play goal. That kind of got that two-goal lead back there. Well, uh, we alluded to it earlier that discipline is is playing tough, and playing tough is, is also being disciplined. So uh, as long as we can continue to stay out of the penalty box and, and take as much as we can take uh, as far as the Asheville uh, undisciplined play, uh, there's no reason why we can't uh, remain as focused as we can and, and win this game. No, really, those... Those kind of keys uh, maintain it, but still 40 more minutes to go. Uh, what are your feelings right now, getting closer and closer to uh, uh, to winding perhaps this season down? But I know there's still a long way to go uh, in this game, but still, once it gets once that click, uh, clock starts clicking down again, does it, it build up that anticipation a little more and more for what's to come? Oh, for sure, Ed. Right now, it's uh, the clock can't seem to tick off fast enough right now. It seems like it's taken three hours to play a 10-minute <laughs> uh, stretch of play there, so... You know, hopefully we can continue to just do what's, what's kept us successful all year long. And uh, for that, I, I see no reason why we can't continue to play that way. So the Quad City Mallards have a 3-1 to one lead as we are in our first intermission. Second period coming up. Brent Balecki. Brent Balecki uh, with a strong effort to, and a brilliant game played in game four. Uh, again, seeing a couple of odd bounces go against him. Still capable of maybe shutting it down, isn't he? And, and carrying his team, keeping his team in it because he's a big reason why they made it to the finals. Well, in no way is this game over yet. A, a three to one lead, as, as Martin Holinka said, is, is not a lot. It's some of the hardest leads in hockey to maintain. Um, and by Lecky, uh, the way he's been playing all season long, he could he could easily shut the door from here on out and, and keep us uh, on the scoreboard at only three goals. And, and from there, who knows? So. You know, we, we still have 40 minutes to go, and hopefully the guys, uh, I'm sure Paul McLean has kept the guys' heads in it in the, in the dressing room there, told us to probably all keep focused, and uh, I could imagine that uh, when we come out here to play the second period, we'll be ready to go. You look at both teams' playoff history, the Mallards in their fifth consecutive finals appearance, and that's the second time a minor league team has ever accomplished that feat. Back-to-back -back titles in 97-98, and the Mallards are trying to recapture the cup for the first time since that 1998 Colonial Cup championship. Asheville, having moved here two years ago, were knocked out of the playoffs in 99 in the first round by Quad City, exited in the opening round last season, but uh, won the championship as Brantford, Ontario in 1993. That was the second year of the UHL. We are about set for period number two for the Asheville Civic Center. Paul McLean, the head coach of the Mallards, led his team to 55 regular season wins and hockey history this year with the Mallards' fifth straight 50-win season. Matt Bingham, meanwhile, who is in his first year in Asheville, third year as a head coach overall, guiding the smoke to their first final since 1993. Trying to figure out a way to come back from two goals down after one. Both teams have one man in the penalty box. It'll be four on four as we start the second period. You see in the penalty box, Blue Pennefield for the smoke. He is off. And Mark McFarland in the box for Quad City. They both still have 25 seconds of time against them. Martin Alenka back on the ice will take the face off to start period number two. Mallards out in front, 3-1. Maroon-clad Mallards will go from your right to your left on your screen. A.C. Ruid will take the 
faceoff for Asheville. Ed, it's funny, uh, between intermissions, most times when we have a, a three to one lead or a, a two goal lead for that matter, the first five minutes of the next period is always the most important thing for us coming out of the dressing room. We always say, let's not give them a cheap early one. A quick shot though by the smoke to start the period. Buck shot it again, but bounces away in the slot and third back to center ice. Rob Marshall will shoot it back in. And the Mallards will take it the other way. Vice weaving through traffic pass. Drop for Halinka. Whistles one wide of the goal. Lasovsky sends it back to the corner. McFarland now out of the box. Sent it back in behind the net. Back to five on five now. Cleared up the ice, but Perot has it for Quad City. Bounces in and left of the goal. Takes some funny carrows back there, and it's trapped into the back of the net. Once again, our thanks to the folks at John Deere for making these telecasts possible, both last night and tonight, back live to the Quad Cities. John Deere, proud sponsor of the Quad City Mallards, and again, a thank you to those folks that helped make this broadcast possible. And again, thank you, John Deere your continued support of Quad City Mallards hockey. Mallards win the draw. Here's Sarov. Sarov played off his stick, and Wilson sends it up the near side, but not out. Gets it right back, and it's sent back the other way. Mallards still in control. Early on, second period. Asheville shoots it back in. Mallards look to move it the other direction. As went underneath the stick of Ulmer. And touched up for an icing call against the smoke. A little more than a minute gone by here in period number two. Oh, there's Dan Bjornley on the bench. It's nice to see that he's back here. Uh, he took a pretty big cut there uh, during the first period. And it looks like he's, uh, his face isn't cut, but I think it was it was probably his head that was cut there a little earlier. And it's nice to see that he's back and uh, doesn't seem to have a concussion at all. It's, which is always the big fear when you see a player get his head slammed into the glass in such a manner as, as what happened in his instance there. There was a lot of blood there, too, that cut, obviously, underneath the helmet. Faceoff comes out to the right point. Colborne couldn't hold it in. Has to go back at center ice to get it. And it's dumped back in the other way. Again, Olaf Jenstad is gone. He got a game misconduct for that hit on Bjornley. And that's significant. Jinstead with 10 points and has had a good playoff series. And is out, took himself out in that first. On the far side, it's dumped in on Balecki. Colborne will play it out of the corner. Up the far side, they look to send it out. And it's picked back up the other way. Colborne at center ice, faked the shot. And spins back around to the right point. His team is changing as he dumps it in behind the goal. Behind the net again. Watson with it on the left side. Falls down but plays it back to Colborne. Shoots it in for the high slot. Dimeline there will cover. And again, Joe Dimeline playing solidly as ever right now. He let in uh, one quick goal in the, uh, at the start of the first, but you know what, since then he's been very solid, and, uh, and that's the way he plays. Very experienced uh, playoff goaltender. He's got a Colonial Cup championship under his belt. And you know what, he's playing like he wants another one again tonight, and that's uh, that's tremendous to see out there. Faceoff will be to his right. He saw six shots in that opening period. The Mallards outshot the smoke 12-6 in the first. On the draw, it's poked back to the corner. They got it back, Radinko sent it in front. Jammed up in front, but comes back out from for Akia. His drive wide. Demoline down in the net. Now gets back on his feet as it's in behind the goal. Mallards with the puck. They look to move it out. Near side. This is Prue trying to feed it back to Halenka. Broken up by Akia. Here's Watson the other way. Off to Benefield. Benefield trying to get around the defender. Hold down. Penalty coming. And Demoline gets crunched from behind. As a smoke player crashed into the net, and Timmeline is slow to get up, and out comes trainer Mark Hitchborn. And are we going to have a penalty? Watson there with a shot. They're piled in the corner. Alinka drags Benefield out of the pile as they get separated, and Timmeline will get looked at. And McFarland is down too. Joban talking. Watson's going to the box. This was going to be, Ryan, a Asheville power play as Watson charged over into the corner, but separated once again by the linesman. 
going to be an Asheville power play, but that hit, I think, nullified it. We're going to get another look. The hip check, Ryan, of the goaltender. Well, if, if that wasn't it, then it's definitely once the pileup started, and I'm not sure what the referee actually saw here on on the Watson hit on Dimmeline, but after the penalty, after that collision there, I could see him sort of throwing his stick into the pile and, and spearing some of the Quantum Mallards players, and perhaps that's what uh, the head referee here saw. I'm not exactly sure what he's calling, but that would be my guess. I think there's a trip right there in Bjornley, then Dimmeline gets run, and McFarland goes down as he kind of topples over the pile. Not sure how he got hurt. Demmer now up on his knees, and John Doolin, the equipment manager, who has experience as a trainer as well in the National Hockey League, both out talking to their Mallards as Watson is in the box. The arm, though, went up right before that collision, Ryan. I think there was going to be a trip called, and yes. it was going to be a delay penalty called in Quad City. Then they had the collision. That's never a good sign. I had to see two of our medical staff or training staff out on the ice at the same time. Uh, I can't recall it happening this year. You see the Mallards now huddled around Paul McLean, and I got to imagine that he's got to be telling them to stay tough, but at the same time, you think he's reiterating not to retaliate. It's still a two-goal game right now. Well, you know what? It's, it's exactly it. Uh, there's no reason for us to change our game strategy from, from game one right on through here. Uh, it's been to, to basically suck up everything that they, they throw at us. We'll, we'll take all their, their cheap, uh, undisciplined play all series long, as long as it gets us that championship ring at the end and we'll slip over that trophy. So basically, I guess he's probably just telling the guys right now, just remain focused, guys. There's, there's a task at hand that we want that's more important than any personal revenge that we could get right now uh, by taking undisciplined uh, that penalty. Lane looking on. Demoline on his knees. McFarland just got to his hands and knees a moment ago. You get a look at Demoline there with Mark Hitchborn to his right. There's Mark McFarland and John Doolin. McFarland still shaking off the sting of that pile up. Demoline with the mask up. Look to see if he is okay. Got hip checked. And went down and was on the bottom end of that dog pile. There is Martin Villeneuve, if needed. You would see him in net. And that's a great reason uh, why you use this rotation, Ryan, because there's a guy that's having a terrific playoffs in his own right. You know what, it's, uh, it was a very sad day when, when we had to get rid of uh, Rick Emmett and Scott Myers to pick up uh, Joe Dimmeline. But in the end, you know what, uh, if you want to throw a Martin Villeneuve in net or Joe Dimmeline, they're two of the best goalies in, in the entire league. Uh, it really solidifies that position for us, and it, it, it allows us to know that if an Asheville team such as this wants to run one of our goaltenders and injure him, well, you know what? We have another one that we can throw right back in net that's just as good and just as capable of winning a championship for us. Bjornley is in the box. Demoline looks to stay in. And so far, it's uh, just Bjornley has the two-minute uh, penalty up there on the board unaware right now of what they've given Watson, but he is sitting in the penalty box for Asheville. But has no penalty time up on him. They've given it. Wow. They've given Watson two minutes for roughing. Bjornley gets a hooking and a roughing call. <laughs> so the Mallards are shorthanded out of that mess. Nashville will get their third power play of the game. And there you see, actually, I think Mark McFarland got the roughing call in. They had, they gave us Bjornley getting the roughing. I think it was Mark McFarland as he is in the box. That makes a lot more sense than that. Um, and they're still talking away a little bit. Yeah, they're John away. There's a couple of competitors there, and Mark McFarland and Bruce Watson. And Watson sort of pointed at center ice saying, all right, as soon as you get to the box, let's go fight. And you know what, quite honestly, we don't need that right now, and I, I doubt that'll actually happen. You don't think Watson won't ask, though, in two minutes? <laughs> Here's a shot in, in the right point by Dumas wide, and it's cleared onto the Asheville bench. And a 
think that he'll try to bait, don't you? Oh, I'm sure he will. I, uh, he's put up over 400 penalty minutes this year. I'm sure he's going to... He, he probably want to fight right now, but there's, there's no reason for anyone on our team to, to stand up and fight at this point. No, We're the ones with the lead. We're the ones with the momentum. Uh, we don't need a shift in that, and that's that's basically what he's trying to do is, is get a shift in momentum. That's a good point. I mean, they're battling from behind. Can't afford to make mistakes. Can't afford really to miss anybody off the ice for any significant length of time. Already handicapped with Jenstead gone. Colborn shoots it in, and the Mallards take it away, knocking down the shot attempt. This team really couldn't afford to lose a Jenstead for this game. He was playing too well to miss this crucial a game, it seemed like. But made the hit on Bjornley that got him five minutes in a game misconduct. And he is gone. On the left wing, Mallard's backhanded out of the zone again. And the Asheville Smoke will have to regroup. Pass it on the near side. Intended for Krimen. Goulash broke it up, and Ruid will get its team regrouped. Radinko backhands it in. Toporowski going back for it. Clears it, linked to the ice the other way. Lucky had to spin it away. The Mallards were bearing down. Nadeau has it tied up, but Andreev takes it away. Up ice is clearing pass, knocked down. A shot whistles wide of the goal. Nadeau gets it back. Patrick Nadeau with Prue, the two forwards. And it comes back out along the far side. Prue tried to knock it away and dumps it back in the zone the other direction. Lost the stick in the process, but gets it back from teammate Paul Johnson as Radinko comes up the near side. He gets run into the boards, and the Mallards grab the loose puck. Can I clear as it's held in by Swungstu? Swungstu right wing, fanned in the shot. And the Mallards take it away. They've got a two-on-one. Near side, Hugo Prue. Prue looks for the shot, and it's tipped just wide by Halenka. Mallards with another good chance there. Short-handed. They got a short-handed goal in the first. Here's Ryan Akia the other way. Akia looks to dump it in. Picked up right side, Andreev, tied up by a pair of Mallards. Now on the right wing, Quad City will clear it out of the zone again, and both teams are at even strength. Hudson in front, it's loose in the crease, and batted back to the near side by Swungstu, and the smoke looks to break out the other way. Radinko with a drive right side, saved by Demoline. And another little collection of players up in front. The Mallards maintain a two-goal lead, th leading 3-1, five minutes deep into this second period. Oh, another little tie-up in front of the net, and Carey's gonna plead his case. Head referee there. Uh, it's a funny thing to watch him do that sometimes. Uh, you know he's not exactly innocent on on every play, but it's uh, it's pretty funny to watch him do that stuff. Red Bolecki standing in net the other way. This is that shorthanded attempt moments ago, and a great little battle as McFarland battled for position. And comes back the other direction. Well, it's that time of year, Ryan, with battles in front of the net, they're wars, aren't they? Oh, for sure they are. It's uh, strongest always survives there. On pass up ice, bounce right in front of the Asheville gold. It'll be an icing call. Or the Brave going that painted area, huh? Well, it's what they say, you know, they, uh, you want to score goals, you got to get your nose dirty in the playoffs. and. You gotta be ready to take a, a stick in the face or a slash across the arms, whatever it takes, but you wanna put one in there. Jason Ulmer leads everybody in the playoffs with 20 points. He's paid a price. You saw him last night, some close-up shots, and making a look at him as it goes to the bench. His face pretty cut up as this series has gone on. You see below his left eye, and right next to his nose, his cuts, he's got a couple of stitches in there. You know what they always say, uh, a team that's icing themselves and up themselves after the ever, each and every game in the playoffs, it's usually the victorious team because they've been willing to sacrifice their bodies and, and do whatever it takes discipline-wise to get that win. And you know what, Jason Almer is a perfect picture of that. He's all cut up, he's all bloody, but you know what, he's victorious and he's and he's playing great out here for us. So, uh, so far it's been working. This will stop play again. Toprowski and Watson come together again. Just a lot of pointing at one another and they continue to talk. <laughs> another stoppage of play. A look at Watson who came out of the box moments ago. Big 
Bruce Watson, 6'2", 227. Kerry Toporowski, 6'2", 225. There's another little glove to the face. Wow. <laughs> he and Watson matched up right there, right in front of the glass. Look at that. Watson will go to the bench. He was standing there all the while just to try to bait something, and he's even going off. And Topper's going to point that out. believe that? That was just to try to bait him. He had nothing to do with that face-off right there. And this has Topper fuming. Topper's going off. I don't believe it. And it's going to be matching penalties here. Yep, they're going to bring Watson off the bench. He's going to go to the penalty box. But Kerry Toporowski stood there and took all that. And they're going to put him in anyway. Yeah, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong there. Kerry was being uh, very disciplined on that play. Watson shouldn't have even been on the ice. He'd already been changed for, and that's really, a, uh, I believe, a refereeing uh, problem there. He should have he should have known that there was already five actual players on the ice ready for the faceoff, and Watson was just out there stirring things up. Unbelievable. Here's Coborn, shot from the tie slot, saved by Demoline through traffic. That one was kind of tough to take if you're Quad City. Yeah, it is. You know, we're harping on this discipline play and trying to do and, it. And Topper's just standing there, and, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a twisted irony, perhaps it's just his uh, reputation getting the best of him in that situation. The referee doesn't quite see everything that happened, but he sees two guys coming together, and he automatically assumes the Topper was involved in it. Not for the slot right on, and a save by Demoline on a loose puck in the crease. Got partially deflected, but still made his way through, and I believe it was Ruud that got the shot. Well, Ruud has Demoline down and out here on the rebound, but Demoline somehow manages to battle back and get his glove in the way of the. Ruud there got that shot and look away. And he did too. Another 11. big save there by Joe Demoline. And keeps the Mallards out in front by two. Face off. I sent it to the far side. McFarland chips it out of the zone. Asheville at their own blue line. Ruin around the defender. Brought it in. Trying to hit Colborne. And he has to go retrieve it along the wing. Colborne in the corner. Backhands it to Prasovsky. And a pass broken up from him. And the Mallards head the other direction. Here's Solinka. Ruin trying to center. And it winds up into the seats. Firing off the far side with 14.01 to go in the second period. To get a good look at Hugo Pru here. Has he ever had some big, big playoff goals here so far? A clutch player this time of year, isn't he? That is five assists with 13 points in this postseason, but he does have a shorthanded goal in this game tonight. Well, he just plays with so much fire and so much passion that uh, it's so contagious out there. He just he wants to win every shift that, that he gets on the ice, and it's uh, it's an amazing uh, feeling to have a guy on that bench with you that is just so intense every time he's on the ice that it just it sort of rubs off on the entire team, and that's the way we're playing right now. <laughs> Buck dumped ahead. Serov with a shot from the blue line, knocked down by Balecki Smith. Gibson trying to retrieve it in the corner. Has it taken away by Raposa? Raposa up the far side. Freeman fighting around the defender. Can't get a shot away in behind the net. There's a collision there, and a whistle will stop play with 13.38 to go in the second. No scoring yet in the second period. That man, Kelly Perot, three assists last night. Nine points in these playoffs. Quad City keeps a two-goal lead. Parole, a great offensive defenseman, Ryan, but in all-round skills, a perfect defenseman in a lot of ways, isn't he? Well, you know, he's had, he has tons of experience at the higher level, and there's no reason, uh, sorry, there's every reason to believe that uh, because he's so gifted as a defenseman, that's the reason he's always up at that level. Uh, we're just fortunate enough to have him down here uh, for our playoff run, and it's, uh, it's 
great to see, but you're right, he's been a tremendous asset to this team. And uh, not only can he can he play physical, uh, great offensively, but he's also played very physical in, in such a small rink as this when we need him to play physical. Tied up in behind the quad city net. They battle on for it there. And we think it's the loose puck. Centers the swung stew, shoots it way high and wide. Asheville maintains control, centering pass stolen away. Mallards break out the other direction. This is Chad Power with a shot that goes high and wide. And it's held in left point by Jovan, who chips it into the stands along the far side, stopping the clock with 13.04 to go in this second period. There's another player that's sort of cut out of the same mold as, as a Hugo Peru, and that's Freddie Jovan. He, uh, he's just a ball of energy out there, and he, you know he wears his heart on his sleeve the way he plays. He's just always in guys' faces, both uh, on their team and on our team. He's just one of those guys that's always go, 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 and just a great character player to have on any team. Face-off coming up right in front of the Mallards bench. Halenka on the draw, and it kicked back to the Quad City blue line. Sin ahead. Aikia dumping a link to the ice, race on back for it, and there's an icing call against the Asheville Smoke with 12.51 to go here in this second period. Mallards out in front, 3-1. This is Iowa Wireless, Squad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Fuel, fire, desire. 2001-2002 Mallards season tickets are now on sale. Meet the price increase for next year by purchasing your Mallard season tickets for next year. Call the Mallard's office at 309-764-7825 for season tickets to the 2001-2002 season. And Bjorn gets the face off from the left point. And Prue plays it back to the other point. And it's knocked down to the crease by Bolecki. Jorlegan holds it in, finds Prue in behind the net, lost the handle, but a drive wide by Jovan, and now the Mallards maintain control. Bjorlegan another drive, loose puck right of the crease. They had Balecki out of the out of position for a moment, couldn't put a shot away. Now again, here's Halenka, backhands one, or McFarland backhands one toward the net, and it's tipped away, and the Mallards get it back. Quad City regrouping and are changing as they send it up ice. Serov tips it ahead. Side Colborn works it forward and it bounced away from Andreev. Mallards sent it linked to the ice the other direction. Race on for it. Serov gets to the puck, centers, but it's taken away by the smoke. Here's Ruin up the near side. Backhands one linked to the ice that bounced off Raposa. In collision in behind the net. Homer sends it up ice, but it's held in there. Pass to the slot, knocked down. Mallard's breaking out. They got a three on two. Serov fires a shot wide, and Raposa gets it near side. Sends it to the near side. No one there for Asheville. And sent back along the near side. Bounces right in front. Ruid controlling. The far side, it tips away from Gibson. Back to the near corner. There is Dumas. Pass to center ice intended for Radinko. Missed him. That's a roll link to the ice the other way. Touched up, but an icing called against the smoke. With 11-10 to go in the second period. Mallory's still out in front. 3-1. Dan Bjornley hit in that first period and sustained a gash on his head right under the helmet. Now back on the ice. Back on here in this second period. Rookie out of the University of Wisconsin. Mallards with a number of rookies to some high-profile collegiate programs, and that helps, it has to help Ryan in an environment that you're in with the Mallards, doesn't it? Well, it helps in recruiting purposes, you know, to bring, uh, you know, a Dan Bjorman from Wisconsin, you know, now we, have, now we have that option where, you know, next year there might be some graduating seniors that Dan Bjorman knows that could help the Quad City Mallards, and, and here we go, we have an in right there at that university now to try and bring some, uh, some of that talent here. He was the first Badger that the Mallards had successfully signed, came in at mid-season. Here's along the near side, Akia right point, as one bounce away to the far corner. Picked up there, he cleared up the near side, Mallards get it back. To work it up ice the other way, but it's tied up. Comes back out, Armbrist finds power at center ice, power. Only one on three, sends it ahead as Quad City looks to change. Here's Benefield near side. 
he runs in to Bjorn Lee, who dumps it ahead. Lucky clears up the far side, but it bounces in front. Shot tipped by Halenka right on net. And again, after the whistle, players come together once more. Swung Stu and McFarland this time talking in the corner. Benefield there too as Malecki made a nice save. Swung Stu still talking. Swung Stu, the biggest guy in the league as far as height and weight. 6'5", 262. The linesman talks to him as he heads back to his bench in the far side. Faceoff will be to the left of Brent Balecki. Nearing the midway point of this game, Quad City still out in front by a pair.
by Chad Power was a result of his faceoff. But, you know, he's being one of those guys that are that are really uh, emotional and a, and a good leader for us right now. Nashville the other way. Akia sends it up by East Paul Johnson. Back the other direction. Taken back by Rob Marshall. Johnson gets it back and a whistle. And he gets decked after the whistle. Let's see what they decide to call here. They continue to play Johnson. Appears to be fine, but slow getting up. Tonight's game brought to you in part by John Deere. Special thanks to the folks at John Deere for helping make tonight possible. Back to the Quad Cities, sponsoring the telecast both last night and this evening. John Deere, a proud sponsor of the Quad City Mallards for each of their six seasons. Again, thank you, John Deere. Paul McLean looking on as the Mallards get a face off in their offensive zone. I bet you he's sitting there thinking what I'm thinking up here, and that's uh, this clock just does not seem to be moving. <laughs> Faceoff came out, got by Bjorn Benefield trying to run it down, but the Mallards tie it up in the near boards. Akia tried to beat a man over the blue line, and it's knocked away from him. Here come the Mallards the other way. McFarland, Prue, Holenka in the slot, turned around, and it's taken away by Swangstu. He runs into Bjorn Lee, had the puck turned over. Now Prue battling Akia, and Swangstu gets it back. He looks to carry it in. Swung Stu has it batted away momentarily by Bjorn, but taken back by Radenko. Colborn with an attempted shot. That got smothered. Prue breaks out the other way. Prue feeds Holenka, trying to get around. Colborn does, trying to get a shot. Stick tied up, but still got one away that went wide. What an effort. Prue steals it inside the blue line, trying to feed it in front. Shot goes wide, and Colborn takes it back. Mallards look to hold the blue line, dumped ahead by Radinko. Asheville forced to change. Mallards will dump it the other way. The flex off the far boards to Balecki. He'll try to sweep the near side. There is Omer. Now Gibson trying to beat back to Omer, tied up by Kremen. Still able to send it to Sarov, who shot it wide. Sarov trying to get it back. Kremen had a pass out of his reach, and the Mallards go back to get it in their own end. Gibson. Tips it ahead. Here's Sarov trying to hit Omer. Omer moving through. Has it poked away. It couldn't quite corral that bouncing puck. And Dumas tipped it forward. Colborn looking to clear. Mallard still jabbing away at it. In behind the net. Omer tied up by Kremen. Gibson there with a the loose puck. Gibson pounced on the loose puck. On the far side. Lost the handle as Asheville clears the center. Mallards bring it back in. Paul Johnson. Look to work it in. Colborn takes it back. Sends it up the far boards. Big crunching hit on Colborn. Loose puck at center ice. Kremen couldn't handle it and dumps it back the other way. Here's Dumas, harassed by Armbrust. Sends it up the far side. Radinko dumps it in as Asheville's line is exhausted. Mallard's the other way. Perot up near side. Johnson tips it forward. That's taken away by Tom Wilson. Here's Hirsch. Hirsch will dump it in the near corner. Circles around to the far side. Wilson. Trying to send it out. Hops away, though, from Ruit. And Mallards dump it back in the other way. And a whistle will stop play as the Mallards maintain a 3-1 lead. 5-19 to go in the second. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. We are back. Mallards here in the Colonial Cup Finals in Asheville, and you can get your 2001 playoff souvenirs at the Mallards Nest in downtown Moline. Pick up Quad City Mallards playoff merchandise and finals merchandise. Always a little more meaningful when you capture that cup and have a souvenir from the playoff season. You can pick that up at the Mallards Nest located in downtown Moline. Mallards shoot it in from the blue line. Goulash is shot, knocked down by Balecki, and it's cleared up the far side, going linked to the ice the other way. And there is the icing call against the smoke with 5.04 to go in this period. Mallards up 3-1. They haven't added a goal, Ryan, to build on this two-goal margin, but it seems like the last uh, few minutes took a lot out of the smoke. Well, you know, it's uh, sometimes even if you can't get a goal, 
just the momentum that you feel in trying to score a goal and by getting a few shots and, and controlling the opposite zone, sometimes that can last for four or five, six minutes uh, in a period and, uh, and really demoralize the team that's uh, opposing that. So uh, even though you're right, it did, it, we didn't come up with that backbreaking uh, fourth goal. Perhaps momentum has swung enough in our favor that we can control it for the last five minutes here and take it into the third period. A tip near side. Aki has sent it up the near side. And the Mallards ship it back the other way. Quad City looking to clear. Pass knocked down. And Ruid will dump it in the far side. Demoline sweeps it back near side. Ruid bumped into it. The Mallards get it back the other way as Gulai sends it up but not out of the zone. Shot to the left point, saved Demoline, and the Mallards regain possession. Crew sends it back to center ice. Dumas dumps it high in the air, and that's going to wind up a few rows back. 427 to go in the second period. J.C. Ruin for the Asheville Smoke. Leading scorer for them coming in the playoffs, and you could argue that he'd be an MVP candidate in the postseason, at least for the Eastern Conference side, but he's been pretty well contained in this series, especially the last few nights. Well, you're right. You know, he, uh, he did score a goal, I think, in the first game, and he scored uh, a big goal there in the third game. But I think in, in the other uh, two games and so far tonight in the other third game, uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't quite uh, been as effective as he has earlier in the season. But you know what? We got some pretty good defense that he's going against, and it's... Uh, it's pretty tough uh, to do that when you got a goulash and a, and a top roast in your face. 11 playoff goals you saw. Here's Bjornley right side. Tried to center. Pass knocked down. Gibson goes to get it in the corner. Gibson to Serov. Serov right side. Fires a shot just wide. It's over along the near boards. And the Mallards get it back at center. Back around and behind the net. Now Dumas looks to head the other way. Over it hit Dumas or hit a stick of an Asheville player back toward the near corner. And here comes Radinko the other way. Bogdan Radinko right side makes the shot, takes it all the way in behind the net, looking to center, but tied up all the way. And the Mallards will clear on the far side. He had a man in front, but never could get that pass away. Now Sarov with a steal. Sarov right side tried to hit a Mallard cutting through with the pass out of the reach of Peter Armbrust. Muldoon the other way. Goes in behind the net, carry Toprowski. Sends it out of the zone on the far side. This will roll into the ice the other direction, but not an icing call as it didn't go far enough. Here come the smoke the other direction. Shot from the left side, smothered. And Mike Colborn from the stick of Chad Power. Swung to in the far side. And to send it out. And it bounces up. Leave onto the Quad City bench to stop play. You see Bruce Watson in front of the Mallards bench yet again, this time with no helmet. Fuel, fire, desire. Mallards 2001-2002 corporate sponsorships are available for next season already. Join the Mallards team with some exciting promotional possibilities as the Mallards look to the 2001 season at the mark of the Quad Cities. Call 309-764-7825 for Mallard's corporate sponsorship opportunity. Mallard's controlling the draw. It's back out front. Ruin had it taken away by Prue. And here is Halenka. Halenka. Battling the stick of Akia. Lost it behind the net. They're going to call that slash. And rightly so, I believe that Aki came down very hard on Martin Holinka's uh, exposed forearm. And again, that's a, it's a penalty and it should be called. He can, he can break a man's wrist very easy that way. Aki could be in the box for two minutes for slashing. Had to call that stick went way up. We're about to say, even though we had a lot of penalties, you get another look, watch the stick come all the way across. Yeah, that's the right call he, he made there. It's uh, that's just a dangerous play. Again, you can, those are the type of penalties that that Asheville is, uh, has been trying to do all game, but the kind of penalties that need need to be called in the game of magnitude. And a while where the penalties 
were cut down a bit as they've only given the Mallards their third power play of this game. Faceoff coming up. It comes back to the slot of Bjornley. Ruid, though, takes it away. He's got a two-on-one. Trying to feed Kremen and missed him with a pass. He's ridden out of the play. Here come the Mallards the other direction. Through to Holenka, spinning to get control. It's in the slot. McFarlane off on the right side. Shot from there and is saved by Balecki. Cleared away by Wilson. Mallards will change up. Still on the power play. Mallards dump it back in. And there's an injured Quad City player behind the play. And a whistle will stop. Action there. Kelly Perot slow to get up. Still bent over and smarting. That was way, way behind the action. Do you have any idea what happened there, Lynn? I did not see that, and obviously the referee didn't see that as well. Uh, but nonetheless, whatever it was, uh, Kelly Pro seems to be already seems to be skating it off right now. It could have been one of those collisions where either player actually sees each other and they just sort of run each other. They meet in the same space at the same time. Smarts for a while, and, and they get over it. So uh, thankfully, it looks like Kelly Pro is all right here. As he's a key element to our power play and our, the success, success of our power play. Skated around the rink to try to shake that off. And he will go off now. Mallard's power play continues with a minute 25 left on it. Here's the draw. And the Mallards maintain control. Serov flips it off to the far side and Gibson sends it in behind the net. Serov beat Dumas with the puck. Got a Dolmer. Dumas those breaks up a pass in behind the net and clears. Odd City will regroup. New defensive pair out for Asheville. Muldoon and Colborne, the two defensemen. A tip to head. Gibson racing for it right side. Trying to get a quick shot away. Finds Olmer in behind the net. Now to Serov in the corner. Glad Serov. Back in behind the net for Jason Olmer. Back to Serov. Serov lost it off his stick. Muldoon cannot clear. And it goes back in. Stops along the corner. Muldoon races after it. Tries to clear it up ice. Now Colborne has it knocked down by Gibson. Ulmer with a drop right in front. That's denied. And it's held in along the far side point. One timer off the boards by Goulash. Bounces in behind the goal. Serov goes to get it in the corner. Now to Ulmer in the corner. Gibson in behind the net. Gibson trying to beat Serov in front, and it's taken away by Andrea and cleared by Asheville. Closing moments of the power play. Andrea Gibson over the blue line. Muldoon takes it away. Mallard's hold it in the offensive zone. In behind the net. It's taken back away by Asheville. Cannot clear it. And a score by the Mallards on a loose puck for the right side. Chad Power makes it four. What a big goal there for Chad Power. Came off a busted play, but what a great goal. What a great goal for us there. They tried to clear it. Puck bounced on the right side, and the Mallards get the second goal of the night for Chad Power. Here's another look. Well, Harold Hirsch does a great job just flipping it back behind the net and keeping it in. Chad Power actually loses this puck, but on the clearing attempt, it hits Harold Hirsch. Chad Power right there on the rebound to bang it home. But lucky had no chance in that. He's played a great game tonight, but he really had no chance on a turnover that, that deep in your own zone. Hurry should get an assist, his second one. As the Mallards now lead by three in the closing moments of this second period. On the far corner. But tied up there. Asheville comes out of there with it, centering right in front. A what shot a denied by Demoline, who robbed the slope from the doorstep. What a huge save that was. Absolutely huge save by Joe Demoline there. That could have been an easily 4-2 game right there. Again, the forecheck of Asheville turning pucks over, getting a brilliant chance by Redenko and Joe Demoline on the, on the doorstep again. Just Redenko robbing him. Absolutely that, robbing him. Have that crossbar and a little frustration there. He knew he had a chance to get his team back in the thing. That would have been a huge momentum swing toward the end of the period. Demoline keeps his group ahead by three. Just 
unbelievable save, and that's the way he's been all game long tonight. Very solid in goal, coming up with the saves when he needs the saves. Sometimes, Ed, it doesn't matter if you, if you make 50 saves, if you make 10 saves all game long, but they're at the right time in the game. Sometimes that's why good goalies are good goalies. Joe Demley come up with the right timely save at that, at that particular point in the game. Allard's clear, closing second to this second period. The Jorn Lee picks it up in behind the net, looks to run out the clock, there's the horn. The Mallards with a goal late in the second period. Build the lead, it's now a four to one margin for the Quad City Mallards at the second intermission. The Quad City Mallards now 20 minutes away from their third Colonial Cup in franchise history. We'll try to hang on to a three goal lead as we look to the third. Chad Power with his second goal of the night and fifth goal of the playoffs has given Quad City a three goal edge. 4-1 Mallards at the end of two. We're back with our intermission report. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by John Deere. A special thanks to John Deere for helping make these broadcasts possible so we can bring them back to you live in the Quad Cities. John Deere, a longtime sponsor of the Quad City Mallards, and again, a thank you to that company for their continued support of the Mallards and for tonight's telecast. Come back to the Asheville Civic Center here in North Carolina. The Mallards lead the smoke at the second intermission. Four to one our score. Ryan Lindsay, a great, uh, a great second period. We're going to be joined by defenseman Kelly Perot. Uh, Kelly, if you can hear us, uh, what kind of a lift is it to get that kind of goal late in the period now to take a three-goal lead? Yeah, it was a big goal. You know, uh, Towie just uh, happened to, it was kind of a lucky goal on a bad bounce in their zone. The puck came out to him. He just slapped it back into the net. But uh, it's a big goal. You know, we got a three-goal lead, but that doesn't mean too much going into this uh, third period. We're not taking anything for granted. We know it's going to take a lot of hard work, and uh, we just want to make sure to get this job done tonight because uh, it needs to be finished, and uh, we'll be excited to win this championship tonight. Well, you're now 20 minutes away from it with the three-goal lead, Kelly, but obviously you're expecting an onslaught from them in the third period. Any more, uh, any different uh, uh, plan as you look to the third to keep them bottled up and keep them off the board? Well, basically, uh, if you saw the way the second period went, they uh, came at us pretty good at the start of the second period. I think it wasn't about till, till the 10-minute mark that uh, we started playing offensive hockey again, and that's when we started taking it to them. So really, for the Mallards to be successful, we need to play offensive hockey and uh, play in the other, other team's zone because that's where all the fun is. Kelly, a lot of times this year we've had three goal leads going into a third period and uh, situations where we must win games. I can think back to game, uh, game one, we had a three goal lead. What are we going to do uh, in this third period? What do you think Coach McLean's going to tell the guys uh, to make sure that we stay focused for this third period and not allow them to, to creep back into the, into the game with a quick, uh, easy goal? I think basically we need to keep moving the puck quickly and getting it up to our forwards. And uh, as soon as we cross that red line, make sure to get it in deep on them. And uh, once we get in deep, we'll forecheck hard. And uh, we won't back off it too much. We need to keep the pressure on them. And, uh, you know, that, that's going to keep us for, uh, that's going to keep them off the board if we're playing in their end. Uh, Kelly, one uh, one last question. Uh, you looked for further keys. Obviously, uh, uh, maintaining discipline. Uh, did you have you guys talked about that during some of the stoppages? And is that important now as you look for the last 20 minutes? Yeah, it definitely is. You know, Coach McLean, uh, when we start into this playoff run, that was the one thing he definitely stressed to us is uh, that we're going to have to take punches in the head and you know sticks and elbows in the head. And I think in this series, if if if, if you watch the games. And you can see they're, they're the ones that are elbowing us in the head, sticking us, all that other good stuff. And uh, that's just going to put us on the, on the power play. And uh, once we get on that power play, we need to capitalize. But, uh, yeah, we're just looking forward. We're going to give it our all in this third period, and uh, hopefully that will be the end of it. Well, Kelly, appreciate the visit. Hang in there. 20 more minutes to go. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much, guys. Mallards defenseman Kelly Perot joining us during the second intermission as the Mallards have a four to one lead at the second break. Well, you talked to, we've, we've talked about it all series and it, you hate to have that necessarily as a key, but I mean, it's important as uh, as Asheville really has to has to play discipline now themselves for this last third period. Still down three, a couple of goals and they're right back in this thing. 
Uh, they can almost afford, they can't afford to make any mistakes, can they, now in the last period? No, you're right. Uh, Kelly uh, touched on it there in his little interview. Uh, we simply can't afford to allow uh, Astros on discipline play to get inside our heads. We have to continue to play the way we played all game long, and that's a, a suck it up, basically, mentality. We'll take whatever they can give us, whatever they can dish out, we're going to take. It's in the end, all we want is that championship ring. Ryan, also Kelly Perot mentioned uh, that they turned it over and started playing that offensive style and that puck control and maintaining it in the offensive zone. A couple of shifts for Asheville as those smoke players came off. They looked completely drained late in that second period. Did that, do you think that uh, that could be a factor in the third is maybe that play in the last maybe seven, eight minutes of the second took a lot out? Oh, I believe you're right uh, with that. Uh, they rely on their forwards quite an, off, quite an awful lot with the fortune they have of sending all three of their forwards deep into the uh, Mallards uh, defensive zone. Uh, and consequently, it makes them very tired out there on the ice. And right now, if, as long as Quad City can continue to, to continue to move the puck and, and hold the puck in with puck possession uh, for the rest of the third, we should be all right. How much energy, how much more energy is expended playing in the defensive end as opposed to the offensive end? Because really, it, that, that stretch really seemed to wear on them. Well, it's funny you ask that question. Uh, all season long, when, when Coach McLean comes in to talk to us between periods, he's always drawn on the chalkboard, which has a picture of our uh, arena in there, that the defensive, the, the defensive zone, he writes work in that end. In the offensive zone, he writes fun. So basically, you know what? Uh, he'll be in there talking to the guys right now, saying, let's not uh, have to work too much this period. Let's go out there and have a lot of fun, which just basically means let's keep the puck in their end and, and, and keep it out of our end. As long as uh, they're 120 uh, odd feet away from from our goal, they're not going to score any goals, and, and we should win this game. So that's uh, hopefully the attitude we'll have at the start of third period. Equipment manager John Dillon has another phrase in that shot board, too. It's winning is fun, and certainly the Mallards Mines are winning a Colonial Cup tonight. They're 20 minutes away at the moment as they lead the second intermission 4-1. to one. We're back with more. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Welcome back to the Asheville Civic Center here in Asheville, North Carolina. The Mallards leading the smoke 4-1 to one at the second intermission. And we are joined in this intermission report by the beat writer for the Quad City Mallards from the Quad City Times, Craig Cooper, who's covered this team for each of their six years in existence. And uh, uh, this could be a special night uh, that, that you've covered, I'm sure, a long way from home, maybe the farthest you've traveled from Mallards game, but, uh, uh, but uh, at least 20 minutes away from a possible Colonial Cup. Uh, what are your impressions, uh, at least on this night to this point? Uh, I think I think uh, you've got a team that will be very hard to come back on, for one thing. They I have been all season. You've also got a team that's pretty pretty much outmatched skill-wise, I think. And uh, and I don't think there's much chance that they're going to come back from this, but you never know. You know, one thing about it, it certainly has been uh, an interesting series, at least from the standpoint that uh, it, it's been a surprising one with all the stick work and penalties from the Asheville side. Um, is it kind of an uncomfortable feeling as you look at that third period, knowing uh, what, uh, who know, knows what might break out? I, I think, in a, I think in, a, in a game like this that they will probably, I would hope they would go out gracefully, uh, and you would hope that they would, but you never know. I mean, they have the mentality that that uh, that's their game. I mean, that they're, they're tough guys and that uh, that's their game, and, and they may, you know, there may be some funny stuff toward the end. I hope not. We all have deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. You know, this has been a historic season in a lot of senses. 55 wins, uh, of course, in the Mallards' fifth straight 50-win season, part of hockey history now. Uh, what uh, is this season been? Been a lot of fun for you? Seen them all? I mean, uh, where does yeah, this it's rank been among great. the years? Uh, it's been great. I think I I was thinking about this earlier. I think this may be the best team of of the uh, last five seasons, I, skill wise, because the league's better. Uh, to win 55 games, I think, is probably harder now than it was. Uh, four or five years ago when they first did it. They did win 55, I think, in the uh, five years ago or four years ago. Uh, it's harder now. And uh, and uh, the, the skill level, I think, is higher in the league. And this team is, is more skilled, I think, than, than even the two championship teams before. It's interesting because if you're not familiar with the league, if you see the standings, uh, then it still looks like there's one team way above the rest of them. But I don't think people realize that that gap isn't necessarily there. The Mallards have been that yeah, good Yeah, I think year. you're right. I mean, there were... Uh, you know, there were some uh, pretty good teams. And there used to, you know, when the, four or five seasons ago, there would be some nights where they pretty much knew they were going to win, and probably by four or five goals. You don't have that anymore. I mean, there are, some nights they do win by four or five goals, but 
there's not uh, there's more parity now than there was uh, uh, when the Mallards first started the streak. Uh, this has been uh, also a, not only an interesting final, but an interesting trip uh, for you yeah. folks. It's been a road trip within a road trip. What are your impressions? Yeah. You've, you came here to start this trip, and now we ended here tonight. But yeah. we had a little trip in between it's there. It's a long week. Off. Yeah, it was a long week, but it, it's been fun. I mean, uh, the players are fun to hang out with. Uh, it's, it's a good group of guys. I don't know what you think, but, I mean, I, they're fun to hang out with. And we went to Greenville, which I've never been to, and it's a nice city. And uh, I like this city. A little eccentric, but, uh, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's a lot of fun. You know, with this east-west split, you kind of get to see a little bit more of the league now because a, a new team in the league was going to get to the finals this year. For right. certain, a new city at least, uh, because none of the eastern teams had been before. So you do at least when the playoffs started, if the Mallards made the finals, you're going to see someplace new. That was one thing I was thinking about a few minutes ago. Would, uh, would Asheville have made the final had they played Muskegon, for example? Muskegon, I thought, would have matched up very well with these guys, with Asheville. Uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know, but I think it's still a probably pretty, pretty good format. You have to, uh, you have to. The Eastern Division probably should have somebody in the final every year. If you're going to have a, you know, a true East versus West, and you know the two conferences, uh, I think that's the way it should be. Well, again, 20 minutes away from uh, the Mallards capturing their third Colonial Cup. You know, they've done it with in some dramatic fashion in years past, but you think that this playoff run kind of parallels their dominance in the regular season because they have a chance to close out with only Very a couple much playoff so. losses. Very much so. They started the game the same way they've started every game, it seems like, for the last 50. They uh, they jump right on you, put pressure on you, and if you don't if you don't match that intensity or that pressure right away, then you're in deep trouble against these guys, and, and that's what happened tonight. They got three goals early. Uh, one of fluky one. I've never seen that one, uh, but... <laughs> But the first one was pretty fluky, but uh, and then they add two more, and they make you pay for pe uh, for power plays. I mean, they just uh, they do pretty much everything right, especially at this stage, because uh, they're much more disciplined than in the regular season. We're talking with Craig Cooper, the Quad City Times. He's seen a lot of hockey over the years. We appreciate the visit, Coop. It's been fun. Craig Cooper with the Quad City Times. Look forward to your coverage tomorrow and hopefully Colonial Cup coverage. As the Mallards are 20 minutes away from recapturing the crown, they lead 4-1 to one at the second intermission. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. You are back live inside the Asheville Civic Center where the Mallards lead it 4-1 to one at the second intermission. And we get set to start the third period momentarily. As we rejoin you, Ed Beach, along with Ryan Lindsay for the broadcast tonight. Great to have you with us anywhere around the Quad Cities and watching in as the Mallards are 20 minutes away from their third Colonial Cup, up 4-1. to one. Still a lot of work to go, Ryan. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, on quite a number of occasions this year, and, and not all the time, but we've had a, a tendency sometimes to sort of lay back and, and let other teams get back into the game after we've, we've put them down by two or three or four goals. Uh, hopefully tonight... Uh, and I, I'm almost positive tonight, Coach McLean will have the guys raring to go, and, I, and I'm sure that first five minutes will come out, and, and we'll try and dominate, maybe add another goal uh, on our total. A goal in the second period, a strong period, though, for the Mallards, and let's take a look at the action in that second. Here's a good scoring chance here right off the bat. Well, it's the, it's the strength of Martin Holinka, just fighting off Colburn there in front of the net and actually getting hauled down, but it's just that's, that's the stuff of the Washington Capitals love in Martin Holinka, the strength and size. This was late in the period. A good bounce here for the Mallards. A fortuitous carom that finds Chad Power, and there's number two of the night. Well, there's nothing Black you can do on that play. Uh, Ruiz for Asheville has just got to make sure that puck gets out. Anytime a puck uh, should be going out and for some reason stays in uh, via bad bounce or, or whatever, uh, it usually spells trouble, and in that instance, Chad Power uh, able to scoop it up and put it in the empty net. Another look at that goal that bounced back to Power from Hirsch. And the second goal of the evening for the Mallards forward give the Mallards a three-goal lead. You see the Quad City goal, the scoring in the second period. That's the lone goal of the period. And it's got to be a big boost. Uh, they have that three-goal cushion, but they kept that cushion as Asheville made another drive. And Demoline comes through with a big, big save you'll see here. This is an unbelievable save. Redenko wide open in front of the net. Basically, it should be a 4-2 to two game here. And for some reason, uh, Dimmeline comes up with an unbelievable save and keeping this uh, score at a 4-1 margin. Really, it should have been a 4-2 game. And Redenko probably going to kick himself all summer long for not uh, bearing down on that chance. But at the same token, Joe Dimmeline came up with a huge, huge save there. 
The goal's obviously big, but Ryan, that is a momentum-changing type of play, even though you go to that long break uh, at the intermission. Uh, that would have been a huge, huge boost. Asheville, I, I would have to imagine, would have to go to the locker room thinking we're right back in this thing after they got that goal. Well, you're right. Uh, the save in itself is probably a big momentum boost for, for our team. Uh, at the same time, it's probably a reminder to the guys going into the dressing room that, you know what, this game could be 4-2 to two right now. We're going to have to go in here and not give up any uh, easy goals in the first five minutes of play in the third. Otherwise, it will be 4-2, and then a potential of a 4-3 and a 4-4 game comes into play. So uh, hopefully that little save there by Joe Dimline will remind the guys to come out here and, re and remember what uh, is the task at hand. Mallard's out in front, 4-1 to one at the second intermission. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from period number two. Quad City had the advantage and shot 17-9 and won the bulk of the faceoffs almost by a 2-1 to one margin, 19-10. You see there with only one power play each in period number two. Again, the lone goal, Chad Powers scoring his second of the night and fifth of the playoffs as Quad City is out in front four to one at the end of two and are moments away from starting period number three. See, hits even at 15 apiece. Knew this would be a physical series. It has been, although there have been, uh, I guess you would call some annoying tendencies in Asheville's part, but they've got to play almost a perfect 20 minutes now. That Try to get back in it and have a chance to keep their season alive, Ryan. Well, this is exactly it. This is do or die right now. Uh, all the great teams are able to respond in adversity and come back. We'll see. How, we'll see how just how great an Asheville team is, and at the same token, we'll see how good uh, our team has here, in the, and see if we've learned from our mistakes in the past here in the third period, whether or not we give up any uh, early uh, scoring chances, or whether or not we just seem to close the door and, and keep going offensively and, and maintaining that puck possession all period long. You see the Mallards when they're ahead after two. This is a playoff stat. This is a very, very tough team to come back on. Well, it's very hard, you know, when you have uh, four and five players back and you can afford to have four and five players back when you have a three-goal cushion going into the third period. It makes it very difficult for the uh, opposing team to, to generate any offense. Uh, in retrospect, sometimes you can forget about the offensive side of your game and, uh, and not... Uh, try and score goals and, and sometimes that will affect us but right now you know what it's a 9-1 playoff record uh, when leading after the second period uh, I don't want to jinx us but I'd like to say it's uh, about 20 minutes away from sipping out of that cup. Ryan that crowd is right behind the Asheville bench <laughs> and whooping it up you can right down to that sea of maroon and white to the Asheville bench and that's got to be a little disheartening for that group of players I would think it's a little irritating to hear that kind of noise generated by the opposition in your own building yeah especially when you're as far away <laughs> as, as these two teams are uh, <laughs> ge geographically uh, speaking anyways uh, but yeah you're right it, it's great to see uh, those fans back there with all the song signs they have posted it's just it's just a tremendous feeling right now I, it's very hard for me to describe it it's uh, Telling I'm getting a little, a little more excited uh, every every second as this goes by right now and seeing all those people there, it uh, sure would be nice to win it right now. We made this bus ride, Ryan. It's not a short trip. <laughs> they have come a long, long way to see their team win it, have a chance at the Colonial Cup. And they're 20 minutes away from pulling it up. They have a 4-1 advantage. They're cleaning up some ice around the Asheville net. A little water standing there. That's why we've got a little delay before we start the third. And the squeegee on, and still some standing water in some patches. This ice uh, has been, a, well, it's been a talked about surface, I guess oh, you could say. You know, I agree, Ed. <laughs> it's uh, one of those things. That, you know, it, even before practice in our morning skates, uh, when we come into this rink, uh, and, it, and as you see the puck about to be dropped in this in this rink, you see the ice seems to be, it looks like it's still really wet. And some people might think, oh, it must just be the camera lights or whatever it is uh, when you're watching at home, but the ice just doesn't seem to freeze here very quickly. It doesn't matter how little or, or amount of water that the Zamboni puts onto the, uh, onto the ice surface here, it just doesn't freeze quick enough. And it gets that slushy, uh, sloppy kind of uh, feeling to it. It's, yeah, sometimes it's just a joke out there trying to stick handle a puck, but in retrospect, when you have a 4-1 lead coming into the third period uh, and the ice gets 
chunky like that, it, it's kind of good because you know that the other team can't make tic-tac-toe passes and all you have to do is make sure you, you bear down on the puck and just keep getting it out of the zone. That's all you have to worry about right now is just get it out of the zone. You, don't, a, you don't have to win pretty here, Ed. You just have to win, and that's, that's the right. bottom line. It is hot here, and that probably has a little effect on the ice surface in this old building. Bjornley brings it in. Centered one, and it's a sprawling save by Pilecki. Got a little above 80 here in Asheville today. In the mountains of North Carolina. They have wearing on the ice conditions in an antiquated facility such as this. Head coach Paul McLean, he's had a number of great seasons as a head coach in the minors, a couple of 50-win seasons in Peoria, but he's never won a big prize, and you know he is focused on that. Well, you know, for sure, he's been focused uh, all playoffs long, all season long, uh, as a matter of fact, but it's funny, some of the guys were saying, uh, you know, he seems to be a little bit uh, more reserved uh, in the last three or four weeks. He hasn't been as, uh, as loose or joking with the guys as, as he normally isn't. I think it's, it's for a reason. It, it, he's been trying to stay focused for our benefit so that we stay focused. And, uh, you know, so far it's paid off. And uh, it, he seems to be the mastermind behind this right now. A dumped in again by Quad City. Colborne in behind his net. Sends it up the near side. Mallards hold it in. Carry Toporowski to Hirsch and his shot bot blocked. Hopper holds it in again. Topper. And it just go behind Power on the far side. Mallards looking to keep it in the offensive zone. Muldoon tries to chip it out of there. Colborne has to go back to get it. Mallards will change. They played one minute into the third period. It comes near side. That's broken up. Here's Serov. Serov in over the line. Trying to backhand it. Knocked down by Watson skates. Colborne up the far side. Looking to get it clear. Here's Watson at center. Watson looking to get a charge together. Fires a shot. Turned aside by Demoline. Homer will clear it up ice the other way. Watson flops to the ice. The referee saw it all the way, and we continue on. A shot from the right side as they were looking for a stoppage and never got one. Now we've got a stoppage, and they're going to send, I believe, Goulash and Watson off. Well, I believe it's the right call. Watson sort of started the play by roughing up Gary a bit with a, either a punch or a high stick, and, and Gary retaliated and, and gave him one right back. You know, in this circumstance, uh, a four-on-four four is, is, is not a bad play. Here it is. There's the shot. Goo and Watson the other way. Goulash's stick got up a bit and bumped into Watson. He did everything he could to try to draw attention to that. That stick that was up did the job as he got Goulash off, but Watson went off as well for popping him back. Well, you know, I think Watson uh, sort of deserved uh, the retaliation there on the fact that, that, that Gary got him. I don't think the referee was going to call the original penalty on Watson until he saw Gary Goulash give him the stick back. And, you know, we got, I think we may have got a fortunate break there in the fact that he did see the whole play and he decided to just even it up. Watson in the box. Still trying to show he's smarting a bit. Although the Mallards have Goulash out for four minutes. He takes a double minor. Watson gets two, and it apparently is going to be a power play for Asheville. This for the smoke will be their fourth power play. And they have a face-off in their offensive zone as well. A face-off coming up. There's Mark McFarland. They'll serve the second half, or the first half, rather, of the penalty infraction. On, the, on Goulash's double minor, so he'll be the guy out of the box in two minutes. Well, all I can all I can say is that uh, there must have been a little bit of blood drawn there on the on the point of uh, of Watson because otherwise it, it probably would have been evened up to two and two. But when there's blood involved, it's either a four or a five. But if we decide to get Gary a four, Asheville controls the draw. Ryan. Even though there may not have necessarily been blood, there was that a message maybe, a message type of call to say you're not going to have any stick work of any kind really to try to clean it up and have a clean third? That's a good point, Ed. It very well could have been. And uh, 
if that is the, the case, then I, uh, I applaud uh, the referee decision, even though it's against us. Hopefully it sends a message to both sides that that, that type of uh, high-sticking play will not be tolerated. As a vice went awry, and Jovan dumps it the other way. Two minutes deep into this third. Nashville still on the man advantage. One for three so far tonight. Johnson sends it out of the zone off the far boards, and Asheville will go back and regroup. Here come the smoke the other way. Dumas weaving through traffic at center ice, finds Andreev, backhands it to the far side, and waiting there, Paul Johnson clears it out. Asheville will go back and regroup. Colborne will start his team up ice the other way. Smoke needing a power play goal here, down three. Not going to have too many more chances like this tonight. From the high slot, it comes to Colborne, sends it in front. That went through everybody, and Swung Stu picks it up. Andreev couldn't play it. Near side, Colborne sends it back to the corner. Andreev sent it to the side of the net. Johnson able to clear, bangs it off the boards, but it's held in right point. Now near side, Colborne. Colborne sends it in front, bounced off, Swung Stu wide of the net. A chip back along the near side. There's Colborne again, top of the near circle. A shot in from the far side. That goes wide. And Holenka sends it up the near boards and out of the zone. Both teams are changing. Swung Stewart backhands it back toward the near side corner. And Perot sweeps it off to the far side. And that bounces out. And a whistle stops play with just a couple seconds left on the Mallards. Penalty. 2001 playoff souvenirs available at the Mallard's Nest in downtown Moline. Colonial Cup Finals merchandise there as well. You can find them at the Mallard's Nest again located in downtown Moline. That's 2001. Playoff items include Colonial Cup Finals shirts and a whole lot more. That's the Mallard's Nest. Give them a visit in downtown Moline. On the draw, they'll do it over again as Ulmer and Crimmin go head to head on the face off. On the draw, Mallards win the face off and send the puck up ice. Both teams now at even strength. Gibson left side, trying to center for Serov, and instead it's turned aside by the goaltender Balecki. And cleared all the way down the near side by Asheville, who races back to avoid icing. Puck bounces in front of Demoline, who dives and covers up. Demoline got bumped as he lunged out to make the save on the near side of the crease. Slow to get up, but Ryan, I think he had to gamble on that with a bouncing puck in front. Well, he did. It was a great play by Rodenko to get down there and break up the uh, icing icing call, but Demoline's furious right now in net. I guess he felt Crimin may have kicked him. You see his head his snap back. He got one right in the mask. And Mark Hitchborn will give him a look. Well, that probably doesn't feel good, I, uh, I imagine, right, uh, right there. Kermit was flying in. Who knows if he, if he, if he sort of kicked him at all or, or what it was. It was just his momentum. But uh, Dimline not very happy with the, with the call at all. See his head snap back a little bit as he took the hit. Man coming in on the rush from the near side. 16-15 to go. Third period. Mallards with a three-goal lead. Pitchborn will make his way off. Dimline still screaming at the, at the referee, asking him to protect him in a, in a situation like that. He, he doesn't want to end up with a, with a cut throat or whatever. It can happen when, when skates come in contact with a goaltender like that. It's a dangerous play. The goaltender down and pretty vulnerable down the ice. Steve Morofsky, by the way, has heard a lot of talk tonight from either side. Sending it along the right side. Benefield sends it up to Watson. And both teams at even strength now. As it comes in as Demoline sends it to the far side. Power chips it out to neutralize. Allard send it back along the near side boards. They look to change. And we're going to have another penalty here. Yep, that was a slash, I think. Hirsch got raked. As Asheville came in front of their own bench. I believe that's going to be a five-minute major. Wow. As yep. Watson goes off the ice right away. 
And that probably should be. That was a hard flash. Wasn't anything subtle about that one. Benefield will go out. And we'll see what we've got. It will be a two-minute on Benefield. Well, we saw Watson leave and go to the dressing room for some reason. Uh, not exactly sure what he went hmm. for, but Benefield's the one getting the penalty here, a two-minute slashing penalty. Hey, right now is a, is a great opportunity to make it a five, five to one game here and really ice this thing right here. Well, that was the type of penalty we were talking about in the intermission that they just can't take if they want to have a chance. They did not convert in that power play. Now they're shorthanded. Hard enough when you're down three, but now you handicap yourself being down a man for two minutes. Time becoming a factor for them. Shot from the right side, Joban to flex out to Bjornley. He sends one that bounces away, and on the near side, it's chipped out. Mallards look to get back on side. Bjornley now out with Perot. Kelly Perot will start it up ice the other way. Perot in over the line. Right side for Prue. Hugo. Back for Haleka, and it deflects back over the blue line. Loose puck the other way. Ruid can't get there in time as Bjornley runs it down. And Bjornley the other way. At center, sends it off on the near side. It's out of the reach of McFarland. Wilson can't chop it forward. Mallards keep it in the corner. Halinka, they're battling with Wilson for possession. McFarland able to send it in behind the net, but Asheville takes control. Cannot clear. Mallards knock it down. Send it back to the slot of the smoke intercept. Here comes Prasovsky now. No one trying to go in one-on-one. -on -one. Fan than one shot as his stick was tied up by Toporowski. Centers, finds Kremen, and he is hauled down, and we got a Mallards penalty coming. And that will nullify the Mallards power play. Kremen hauled down as the smoke had a chance going the other way shorthanded. Well, early on in that penalty, uh, power play advantage for the Mallards, uh, Someone rang it off the post, but here's a look at the defensive effort. It was a bad change on behalf of the defenseman for, for us that allowed the Asheville player to attack the net there. And, oh, it looks like he got caught by a little high stick. It might have been, I guess Martin Holink is a culprit right now. Prasovsky had Kremen set up. Holink took him down, although that stick that got up prevented Kremen from a strong shot. You could argue if the stick wasn't there to haul him down, it might be four to two. But now it's a four on four situation. Mallard's still up by three goals. Joban will dump it in. Four on four though for another 30 seconds. Then Benefield down to the box. And it'll be an Asheville power play. Smoke from behind their own net. Want to try to move it into the offensive zone for their extra attacker coming. Near side. Colborne trying to center. Pass comes out. Muldoon will hold it in. Left side. Radinko looking to play it. Deflects it off the boards, the inboards. It bounced in front. Demoline with a save from the right side. Well, you know your boards in your own rink well. They bounce funny sometimes in here. And... Watch this ping pong around. What's he holding it here for, well, Ryan? He, originally, the, uh, Rodenko thought that uh, that was going to be a glove ahead play, and it, it did hit an actual glove uh, player here, and neither one of the guys want to touch it. Apparently, the referee decided it wasn't a glove to head, and hey, that's a dangerous play. I think you got to take the whistle in your own end, regardless if it's, uh, if it's a glove to head. Right, because you can easily clear. If you're not going to play, the, the offensive team's not going to play the puck. Demoline with another good stop. There was a goal like that in game three. A weird one that came off the inboards and wound up ricocheting right in front that tied the game. Yeah, it was uh, almost from the exact same spot, uh, except for on the other side of the rink. It's, uh, there are some tricky bounces here, but you know what? We play in a rink back home that uh, there are some, some pretty tricky bounces as well. And to tell you the truth, I guess the Mallards won their second championship on a on one of those bounces, those friendly bounces in a home arena that uh, Ryan Black ended up scoring the winning goal. So, uh, you know, I guess it's uh, 
Sometimes it's good for you. You see another awful bounce there. And a Shawnee chance in front, and a save again by Demoline on a couple of chances. Again, Ed, there, we were trying to clear the puck, and it hit one of the, the columns and hold the glass in place, and puck went right back out in front of the net. Asheville had a great opportunity here to score. Kremen again. Look, Perot shoots it around the boards, and it hits one of those dividers and goes right to Kremen <laughs> in front of the net. I guess it's one of those rules in this rink, you can't take anything for granted. You have to make sure you see the puck and not go to where you think it should be. A great stop. Again. Demoline. He's, he's in his own tonight, that's for sure. Asheville now on a power play as Perot clears it. The far side. Smoke look to regroup and start their man advantage up ice. They look for Ruit, taps it ahead, but that's broken up at the blue line and sent out of the zone and actually onto the penalty box on the Asheville side with 13.22 left in this third period. Allard's out in front by a 4-1 score as you get a look at the Quad City bench. Faceoff is right in front of them. Leaning a little more forward as this one goes on, Ryan. I'm telling you, it's, uh, seems like a clock has started to stand still for <laughs> the second half of this game. They just can't tick off fast enough right now for me. Could be the closing moments of the 2001 hockey season for Quad City. And for Asheville for that matter, but the Mallards trying to capture their third Colonial Cup. I puck tight up along the near side. Toporowski took a couple of shots to the head in that exchange with Bogdan Rodinko. And those two still tied up with one another. Dinko trying to play the puck, got those gloves up a few times in that exchange. Oh yeah, Topper's a big boy, he's definitely not hurt right now, he's uh, he's loving this right now. Topper skates away, and we'll have a face-off coming up around center ice. Face-off coming, this will be on the Mallards end of are on the Asheville end of neutral ice. Quad City gets control. Goulash will shoot it in. Again, the Mallards are shorthanded. And not for long as the closing moments tick away on the Asheville power play. Far side, they bring it in. Here's Swungstu. Swungstu sent it in well wide. Dimeline trying to play it from behind the net. Homer from the corner. Up ice. And it bounces out of the zone as Akia couldn't hold it in in the far point. Colborne gets it back and now Holink is out of the box. Benefield send it in toward the net. Taken away by Quad City and Goulash dumps it ahead with 12 18 to go here in this third period. Mallard's maintaining a three goal margin. Mallard's out in front 4-1 our score with 12 18 to go third period. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Fuel Fire Desire 2001-2002 Mallard season tickets are on sale now. Can be the price increase. And you may have thought that deadline passed, but no. We feel in the celebratory mood here early. We're not going to allow that deadline to just yet. You can still renew your season tickets at this year's prices. Calling 764-7825. 764-7825 for Mallard's 2002 season tickets. Here comes Ruin as his puck taken away by Joban and clears to center ice. Alenka races after the puck, but Vilecki clears to center. Mallard's changing. Get it back. They move it through, but Asheville will try to move it back into the offensive zone. They need to change. The puck winds up over the Quad City goal, and Johnson clears it up near side. Hopped off of Armbrist's stick. Back to Tom Wilson. Puck rolling link to the ice, right on net. Demoline there for the stop. Sends it up near side, and here's Wilson again. Team still looking to get some kind of offensive pressure. Down three, and it's getting desperation time for Asheville. 
Off on the far side, Andriv checked out of the play, and Hirsch gets the loose puck. Hirsch looking for Armbrist near side. Pass just out of his reach, but he gets to it around Rodinko, and it's tied up behind the smoke goal. Asheville gets possession and sends it up the near side. Toporowski holds it in. Here's Ulmer. Ulmer right side. Sends it in front. Kicked out by Bolecki. Ulmer with it back. In behind the net. Armbrist checked off the play, but here's Serov. Backhanded in front. No one home, but Serov gets, or Bickett. Ulmer gets to it. Sends it to the right side, and it bounced off the corner right to Bolecki, who dives and covers. played such a disciplined uh, championship series right here it's in a way it's night and day uh, people back home probably expect to see him throwing the gloves uh, down every night and, and throwing the fist but uh, uh, as you see Topper sitting there next to uh, Paul Johnson uh, both of them have played unbelievable Dr. Dr. Johnson it's funny I've uh, I talked to him quite a bit throughout the season we're, we're pretty close uh, friends and uh, this hopefully will be his his first and, uh, and last championship uh, here tonight uh, we've talked about it uh, quite a few times and he could think of no better way than to go out on top and it's great to see him playing so great out here tonight. Vincent Paul Johnson could be his last game as he looks to go to medical school following this season and then move on. A dumped in by Asheville. Mallard's maintained control. Paul Johnson played juniors in the USHL. Serov up ice to Gibson. Sends it ahead. The Benefield intercepts. Then college hockey at Colorado College. So, and you know this, Ryan, as you play juniors too, hockey and college hockey as well. It's been a part of your life for so, so long that this has got to be an emotional night if it comes to a close here in 10:02 for Paul Johnson. I agree. Mallard's out in front. 4-1 our score. Quad City leads it by three midway through the third. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Sorry about that. <laughs> we are back. Mallards out in front 4-1. So far, so good indeed. Asheville intercepts. They try to move it in. You want know, to know how popular coach has gotten that? Sorry to interrupt you, but that's so far so good. Is uh, It's kind of a funny thing. He, he was asked earlier uh, how, how we thought things were going to the playoffs, and he said, so far, so good. And, now we have a sign uh, quoting him here in, the, in Asheville tonight, and it's, it's great to see that uh, how well he's been accepted in the community, too. That was weeks ago, but it kind of sums it all up, doesn't it? Yes, it does, that's for sure. But the Mallards have worked hard for since October 1. Could be closing in in 9 minutes and 20 seconds. Mallards dump it the other way. Asheville goes back in their own end to pick it up. Quad City changing. Up the near side. Swung Stu dumps it forward, but Hurst sends it out of the zone again. That's going to roll link to the ice and looks to be an icing call and is. How far ago does October 1 seem and oh, day one of training camp, Ryan? You know, it's funny. Uh, you know, look back and, and you talk about, you know, if the season went fast, it usually means it was a good season. If the season went slow, it, it usually means it was a bad season. You know what? October 1st, uh, when you think about it, it does seem a long time ago, but in terms of how fast it the season flew by, uh, God, I can't believe how, how quickly it's gone. And as a result, you know what, well, here we are 4-1 with nine minutes to go in a championship game, and it shows uh, just how smoothly things have gone this year for us. Face-off coming up. Draw, one back to the right point, and Colborn fires a shot that got knocked down. Demoline in traffic, trying to get up amidst the scramble. But tied up on the far side for a brief moment, but the Mallards keep play alive. Sent off the boards, power. Sends it up ice the other way. Picked off by Colborn. He'll send it in back to the near side. And Dimeline will drop it off for Toporowski, who sends it up the far side and out of the zone. There comes Mallard the other way. Power with Armbrust. Power faking a shot, trying to beat Army in front. It deflects and it scores! Five to one! And there's the hat trick for Chad Power.
face fight. Sarah breaking through. Sarah with a backhander. He scores. It's six to one. Wow. Talk about an explosive lineup. Vlad Sarah with a spectacular goal. Going top shelf on a backhander. And it's six one Quad City. Vladdy, you know, he's just been so explosive all season long. And there he is once again, just flying down the room to put a top shelf on a backhand. And right now, I know it's on that bench, the boys can smell it right now. It's, a, it's as good as over. Hopefully this last eight minutes will fly by and there won't be uh, too many things bad going on. But, but what a what a big big two goals that's been. Powers goal, unassisted. Serov will get that goal from Ulmer and Perot. 12th of the playoffs for Sarov. And one the Peanuts. I don't think the officials are amused or anyone else. No, it's uh, there's no room uh, in the game for this. You know, it's, uh, the Ashes had a great season all season long. They played well. And there was nothing they could do right now. The game's pretty much over reach. Six to one. You know. Minutes to go, you know. You hope that uh, you hope this won't spoil our our fun. Still wait to clean up the ice surface, and we remind you that 2001 playoff merchandise is now available at the Mallard's Nest in downtown Moline. That's the Mallard's Nest, located in downtown Moline, part of the John Deere Commons complex. Your stop for Mallards playoff souvenirs and Quad City Mallards Colonial Cup Finals merchandise. They've changed that. Assist on Serov's goal. It's going to be from Gibson and Perot. See the Mallards? Fuel, fire, desire. A five goal lead, an eight, ten, and counting from capturing the Colonial Cup for the first time since 98. Asheville chases it back to their end, and the smoke looked to dump it forward. Raposa drops it off behind him. Prasovsky with a big shot, that goes wide. Kremen backhands it toward the slot, and it winds up in Demoline's glove, and he will hang on for the stoppage with 7.52 to go in this third period. 6-1, Quad City out in front. Ryan, one thing that Chad Power talked with me about last week, Paul McLean, who you see there on the bench, had a, said something. Uh, he said that, he, that the head coach of the Mallards, McLean, has a way of making every game a big game. And that's one reason why you guys have been successful. Has that kind of also broken up the monotony and made the season go so fast? I think you're right. I think that's exactly it. He, uh, he's been that way from day one and wanting everyone to play each game like it is the, in the championship final round. And, you know what, it's, it, it's something that I think that's the reason why we handled the big games so well this year is that every game was a big game, so there wasn't any added pressure when we absolutely had to win a game. We just went out there and played, and uh, we had fun doing it. So, uh, you know, kudos to him. It's been, uh, it's been one, one heck of a ride, and uh, I can't wait to get down there and celebrate myself, Ed. Power looks to dump it in, and now the Mallards will change again. But you played long enough to know that that uh, this can be a long season and can it, it can can get monotonous but i would imagine that if he gives you a challenge like that every night it's it's nice to have oh for sure it is it's always nice to have uh, those challenges uh, it makes uh, the game that much more interesting if you just go out there and, and play a 74 game regular season schedule it can get very monotonous but when you have a coach that's uh, constantly giving you challenges it makes the season that much more fun and that much more challenging so it's it's, it's great Asheville tipping it out of the zone, looking for the break the other way. It's a two-on-two, -two, broken up for the moment by Gulai. Still got a shot away and a save made by Demolai. And Ryan, the Mallards with a five-goal lead, 6.41 away now from capturing the Colonial Cup. This is Iowa Wireless Quad City Mallards Championship Hockey. Beach back with you at the Asheville Civic Center here in North Carolina. Ryan Lindsay is going downstairs. He will be with us throughout the postgame show with interviews with his teammates and bring you the on-ice celebration as a participant in the on-ice celebration. Ryan Lindsay forward for the Mallards will take you on the ice and inside 
The Mallard celebration, which looks to be six minutes and 20 seconds away. Quad City leading by five. We'll try to close it out. Hugo Pruel on the right point, trying to send it ahead. Pass broken up, though, by Radenko. Radenko comes in around the left side, looking to try to center, but it is all the way through to the far point where Colborne tries to get a shot away. That's blocked by Bjornle. They battle into the corner. Battle away at one another as it's tied up along the corner and tipped back behind the net to Joban. Mallard's looked at carried out the other way. McFarland backhands along the boards. Quad City is changing. Asheville sends it up ice. Here is Ruin. Dumps it off to his right. That's taken away by Paul Johnson. Dumped back in from center by Asheville. Demoline corralling a bouncing puck. Toplowski looks to steer it out of there. Lost it. And here's Andreev now. Andreev to the high slot. Sends it back to the corner. And the Mallards will retain possession again. There is... Johnson up the far board. Johnson gets it back. Starts a break the other way. Here's Hirsch. Harold Hirsch fires a shot. Stick save made by Balecki. And it's cleared again by the smoke. Toporowski up the near side. And a whistle blows the play down as we have a two-line pass, I believe, called against Quad City with 5.02 to go in this third period. Faceoff will be in front of Joe Demoline. So you get a look at the Mallards as they retake their bench after that change. This for Quad City would be their third Colonial Cup, and only Thunder Bay has won as many. Thunder Bay now in Rockford won the title in 92, 94, and 95. Quad City champs. In 97 and 98, this would be their third Colonial Cup, matching the most won in the 10-year history of the UHL. Five straight finals appearances for Quad City. Last two seasons in the championship round, ended in defeat. This year, the Mallards looking for a 4-1 series win. Kelly Perot shoots it in along the far corner. And now Bogdan Radinko looking to clear, and it comes right back out. Mallard's Gibson holds it in. Homer, backhanded one from the corner, turned aside by Balecki. Hot City maintains the pressure as Asheville still having trouble getting it cleared out of their own end. Now they do, and Swung Stu cannot get around Perot. Serov takes it back. Here's Gibson. Gibson back to Serov. Serov trying to weave through traffic. Will dump it in as Quad City will change again. the near side. Radinko backhands it, finds Ruit. Ruit trying to fight through a couple of defenders. Has it for Raposa, who shoots it wide. A collision behind the net, and it comes back out on the far side. Here comes Quad City the other way. Prue to Nadeau. Patrick Nadeau finds McFarland, fires a shot just wide, and the smoke get the rebound off the inboards and send it back to center ice. Joban chops it forward. Asheville gets it back. Ruit at the blue line, couldn't corral the pass, and Demoline sends it back the other way. Loose puck, picked up by the smoke. They dump it back in with three and a half to go. The Mallards had a 3-1 lead at the end of one, got on the board inside a minute. It was a 2-1 game and a Nashville power play goal midway through the third, but Steve Gibson scored in a power play of his own. Quad City had a 3-1 lead at the end of one, led 4-1 at the end of two, and now two goals midway through the third, have them out in front by five. They look to move it ahead. Kremen runs into the boards and coughed it up. Chad Power dumps it in the other way. Asheville looks to carry it out of their own end. Puck tied up and dumped back into the near corner. Demoline there to stop it. Up the near side, here is Gibson. Backhands it up ice. Serov nearly got to that puck along the blue line. And a whistle, and I believe we'll have a penalty call coming as a stick snaps in half. And we'll see who will take this infraction. Gary Toprowski, another look. Benefield came to the far side and heads off to his bench. 
two-minute slashing penalty, playing lumberjack there. He did the old ax swing. The snap a stick in half, and that drew the penalty with 2.36 to go. Slashing penalty against Benefield, and the Mallards have a power play. They're fifth of the game. They're one for four in the man advantage tonight. Shot in by Perot. Comes off left point, Goulash flips it in front. They'll go and after the loose puck, has it along the near side. Patrick on the right circle. Out front to Perot. His shot deflected. Goulash sends it back along the wing, but Asheville looking to clear. They've got a gamble up ice. They try to hit Ruiz, and that pass broken up. Here comes Kelly Perot the other way. He'll dump it into the far corner. Pilecki will stop it behind the net. It's really academic now. I say they had to gamble, but really, it's just a matter of a few minutes ticking off the clock, and the Mallards will be presented the 2001 Colonial Cup as Asheville dumps it high in the air. It bounces back the other way. Perot retrieves it behind his own net. Watch the clock tick away in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Closer it gets to zero, the closer Quad City will be to a big, big celebration, three years waiting. On the far side, Johnson goes to get it. It has been a very special season for the Mallards, a historic season with their fifth consecutive 50-win season, the first team in hockey history at any professional level to accomplish five consecutive 50-win years. They passed the Boston Bruins and Montreal Canadiens who had four straight 50-win seasons. We had a whistle and another penalty coming as Hirsch had tangled up at center ice with the Nashville player, and let's see who goes off this time as who had got a visit from the referee, Steve Marofsky. Well, it's been a great thrill to bring you these past two games, and a thank you to John Deere for making that happen, one of several of our corporate partners that helped make these last two broadcasts possible. Again, thank you to John Deere for their support and continued support of the Quad City Mallards. There you get a look at the Mallards from behind the Asheville bench cheering and waiting to celebrate as Squad City 65 seconds away. Brett Colborne has received a five minute slashing major and a game misconduct, so he is gone. This occurring with a minute five left on the clock and the Mallards will get another power play tacked on, but not that it matters now, though they do have a five on three. Asheville dumps it linked to the ice the other way. Demoline will drop it off for Kerry Toporowski. Topper up ice the other direction. Here's Nadeau. Up top, Paul Johnson. Topper again, right point, all the way to the high slot. Fires, and it goes, or deflects wide, back out left point. Now it's a five on four power play. Benefield came out of the box. Crew to the right of the goal. Back to Hugo. Shot blocked. It's loose in front. Comes back to Johnson along the right point. 20 seconds left. Mallard send it back to the corner. 15 seconds to go. The Quad City Mallards are closing in on the Colonial Cup. Toporowski with a drive. That bounces off for the goaltender back to the left corner. It has been a historic season, and now it is a championship season. The Quad City Mallards have won the Colonial Cup.
Betting here in the UHL have captured the league crown. There you see Paul Johnson in the middle of your screen, number 19, getting some hugs. Howard Cornfield there in the middle as well. He and Johnson embrace just left of your screen. As that figures to be the final game of the career of defenseman Paul Johnson. An embrace of John Doolin, the equipment manager. Mark Hitchborn in the middle of your screen celebrating as well. There's our color commentator, Ryan Lindsay, donning a uniform to get down to the ice and take part in the festivities. A little tear in the eye there as well to Harold Hirsch, I think, who began this year in Utica, New York. What a climb he has made and what a moment it has to be for him. His franchise he was traded from went dormant and now he winds up on a championship team. Howard Cornfield and Hirsch embrace. You know how appreciative Hirsch must be to wind up a Mallard. Hirsch with Lowell at times in the AHL. Mallards acquired him, purchasing his rights from Mohawk Valley. And now the ceremonial handshake will come to center ice as Hugo Pru now has won his third title as part of the Mallards. And the two teams will shake hands at center ice. This was a battle and at times a bitter one between these two teams, but a nice sight to see as the two teams congratulate one another on what has been a great season for both clubs, a historic one, as well as a memorable one for the Mallards who won 55 regular season games, a league record 117 points, and now their third Colonial Cup for Asheville. They go and defeat, but their first trip to the finals in the North Carolina era of the franchise and this city gets to experience their first Colonial Cup Finals as they were champions of the Eastern Conference going 6-0 in the postseason. Handshakes taking place in a few moments will be joined by the Commissioner of the UHL, Richard Brassell, who will present the Vice President of Hockey Operations, Howard Cornfield, and the Mallards head coach, Paul McLean, the Colonial Cup, and award them for their 2001 UHL championship. Hugo Pru, part of all three Colonial Cup teams and all five 50-win seasons. He and Mark McFarlane, both members of all three championship clubs, and all both of them were here for all five 50-win years as well. Quad City wins the series, four games to one, the final count of the 2001 Colonial Cup Finals. You see Mark McFarland, number 22, he embraces Vlad Serov, and there is the trophy. The Colonial Cup. The Mallards started work re toward recapturing that crown October 1, first day of training camp, and now it's finally arrived. Another man in the center of your screen in the jacket, John Doolin, nearly 30 years in professional hockey for the Mallards equipment manager. This is his first championship. And what a great feeling it has to be for him. One of the great guys in this game and 20 years in the National Hockey League. He's seen a lot of his teams come close, but this is the first ring and first cup he will get a chance to experience as the Mallards have captured the title. There is the commissioner of the UHL, Richard Lozano, to the Quad City Mallards. Richard Rosal, I'm sure first of all, wanted to congratulate Asheville, but now the Mallards will take the cup. They've announced Jason Ulmer as the 2001 playoffs MVP. He'll get his plaque from Director of Hockey Operations, Mitch Lamaru, and Jason Ulmer with a terrific postseason. He had an assist tonight, 21 points to lead everybody in the playoffs in scoring. The UHL Rookie of the Year is now the 2001 Playoffs MVP. Howard Corn
Cornfield congratulating him. Mallard's captain Steve Gibson skates over to the table at center ice. As Richard Brassell looks to hand over the Colonial Cup to the Quad City captain. There it is, Gibby. Steve Gibson raises the Colonial Cup as the Mallards have captured it for a third time. The Mallards champions in 1997 and 1998 have won the 2001 Colonial Cup. There is Mark McFarland. His third title with Quad City. And the Mallards celebrate the UHL championship. Frederick Chopin holds the cup. And in a few moments, we're going to go down to the ice surface and join in in the celebration. There is Harold Hirsch. You can't help but to be emotional. Here's Paul Johnson after his final game. His final game, you know the emotions have to be there for that man. Hockey is a big part of his life for so long. This is his final game. Let's go down to the ice and Mallard's forward, Ryan Lindsay with Howard Cornfield. And I don't know if you can hear us up there, but I got Howard Cornfield down here. Howard, you worked a couple years to tweak at this lineup to get it back to where they were. The promised land once again. How do you feel tonight? Unbelievable. Hey, I'm I'm so proud of you guys, and now you can take this wolf beard off, Linz, and I'm just so proud of you guys. This is arguably the best team to ever play in the United Hockey League. You guys should be very proud of yourselves. Thanks, Howard. I just wanted to say one more thing, too. Uh, now that we have another Colonial Cup, uh, what's going on on the bus ride home? Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get back at the mark probably about one or two, and people should listen in to Cure 106 tomorrow, and we're looking forward to a great party back in the quad. All right, back upstairs to Ed. The Mallards celebrating the championship. There's Martin Villeneuve, who had a terrific postseason with a 181 goals against average. He won four of his five playoff starts. Dan Bjornley, rookie out of Wisconsin, had a great playoffs as well. Really came on in the postseason, seven points. And there's their playoffs MVP, rookie Jason Ulmer. Mallard's fans enjoying what is a great, great sight. Coming up on radio and Q106 and WOC will continue the celebration. We'll be down in the locker room live after the game. So tune in to Q106 and WOC for post-cam coverage as we'll continue the celebration on the radio side in a few moments. We'll continue the celebration though here at the Asheville Civic Center as we'll go back to Ryan Lindsay for a few moments and continue the Mallard celebration. There's our color commentator with the cup who hands it off to Etienne Drapeau, who became a very popular, maybe one of the more popular Mallards players over recent years. Even wrote a song about our color guy, Ryan Lindsay. Peter Armbrust, the other rookie out of North Dakota, a great key element in this postseason drive with tremendous, a gritty and great defensive uh, play as a Mallards forward. What a great sight it is as the Mallards celebrate the Colonial Cup and now gather in for the championship photo. You see Kelly Perot in front, veteran Gary Goulash, who has been part of two near misses for the Mallards in the finals the last two years. And the Colonial Cup takes center stage for this shot as the Mallards smile and celebrate their 2001 title. Quad City Mallards, champions of the United Hockey League. A 4-1 series win over the Asheville Smoke. They won the first two games of the series on home ice at the mark. Fell in game three in a 4-3 thriller here to the Smoke. But then the Mallards rebound with a 5-2 win last night. And they close it out with a 6-1 victory today. The Mallards fans now have been allowed onto the ice. They're pouring around center ice to get a first-hand glimpse of the 2001 United Hockey League champions. And a close-up look as well at the Colonial Cup that now belongs to Quad City. Kelly Perot, three assists last night, holding it high. 
Brian Lindsay will join the Mallards head coach, Paul McLean, in a moment as he holds his first championship trophy. Paul McLean, who led the Mallards to their fifth straight 50 win year, celebrating with the Cubs. Ryan Lindsay in the midst of that celebration. We'll get the head coach, Paul McLean, shortly. And here comes the champagne as Howard Cornfield will deliver that to center ice and we will uncork it. They hand it out. Kerry Toporowski gets a bottle as the Mallard celebration continues. Let's head back down to the ice as Ryan Lindsay as the head coach of the Mallards, Paul McLean. All right, I'm joined here with Coach McLean. Coach, I just saw you hold the cup up. How'd that feel tonight to be able to hoist that bad boy? Well, uh, Lindsay, you know how it feels, too. It feels pretty darn good. We've worked very hard all year. Yourself, the whole the whole team, we've done, accomplished so much this season, and to cap it off with the championship, is just it just makes it really, really good. Coach, a lot of the guys were talking how uh, once the playoffs started, you seem to be a little bit more uh, reserved as far as uh, joking around and stuff around the room. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess that was the purpose. All right, here we go. No, but um, the more focused attitude around the rink, uh, I think it paid off down the stretch. Is that a uh, part of your part of your ploy to get us to go uh, a little harder every game, or what? Well, yes, we had to make sure we understood that it was going to be very hard to do, and you need focus and intensity and concentration for the whole time we were playing. And uh, I, I knew it was going to be very hard. I haven't done it before, but I talked to enough people that. Kenny Hitchcock, Scotty Bowman's, and enough people that have done it that I know it's very hard and it takes focus and consecration and commitment, so I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that. Coach, let me say congratulations right now on, on TV for you, but hey, excellent year. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for all your work. Ballard Gold, number one. Back up to Ed. The champagne has been uncorked and unleashed, and the Mallards are having fun with their 2001 Colonial Cup title. They won the Terry Cup, best record in the regular season, best record ever in the UHL with 117 points, a 55, 12, and 7 regular season record. No team had ever, they matched the fewest wins in a regular season, matched the most wins in a regular season, and accumulated the most points ever in a United Hockey League regular season. And you see it doused Paul McLean. What a great sight it is as the Mallards continue to celebrate. Ryan Lindsay, I believe, will be joined by a few more teammates as they continue the celebration, and Mallards fans joining in as well as Quad City wins it, closing out this best of seven series with a four to one series victory. Mallards yeah. a winner six to one tonight. Mal uh, Ryan Lindsay is now with the captain, Steve Gibson. Gibby, this has to be especially sweet after the last two seasons you've had with the shoulder injuries and, and, and whatnot. Gibby, how have you kept your focus over the last two years, and how does this how does this feel tonight to, to capture this thing again? Uh, it was really hard to keep my focus. Uh, I had a lot of help uh, at home. My my new wife helped me a lot. She uh, kept my spirits high and did the best she could. But it was just great to come in and play with a bunch of guys like we had this year. Everybody was gelled together, and we just had a lot of fun, and that was the main thing. Gibby, you uh, you scored a big goal tonight in the in the first period there that really I think broke your back. It gave us that two goal cushion that we've been looking for uh, every game we played in here. And uh, when you got a chance to shoot the puck like that in the slot and it went in, how did you feel after after that went in? Did, was it basically over at that point, or did we have to keep going the rest of the night uh, as hard as we did? Actually, I just wanted to keep going. I just wanted I didn't want to come off the ice, but uh, it, it was a big goal for us, especially on a five minute power play. It was just a great feeling to score. I, like you said, it's been a long two years, and finally I could just finish the season and not be uh, too badly hurt. Gibby, it's great to have you back. You're a great leader, and you, you showed it again tonight. Uh, I guess the Quad Cities, uh, we're about to get a little bit of a bath here, but I uh, guess we'll be partying up uh, as soon as we get to Quad Cities, and uh, wherever you want to go, we're going to take that cup to party, I guess, in town. Thanks, our dog. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gibby. Back up to Ed. <laughs> Ryan Lindsay down on the ice surface with the Mallards captain, Steve Gibson. Again, Gibson missing last much of the last two seasons with injuries and an emotional year for him. Was married on New Year's Eve and now celebrates a Colonial Cup championship for 
what has been a very memorable year for him as well. Now, what a year it has been for this Quad City Mallards franchise as the players continue to celebrate down on the ice. It started back on October 1 with training camp. Continued through a great ride. The Mallards started the year with a perfect 6-0 record before falling to defeat for the first time in late October. They put together some tremendous runs. I don't believe any Mallards fans will forget what was a 15-game unbeaten run in November and December as Paul Johnson embraces Ryan Lindsay. And, of course, Asheville, the last team to beat the Mallards in regulation all the way back on February 9th. That's when the championship drive and the drive for five and five straight 50-win seasons really picked up steam. The Mallards steamrolled to a 22-0-4 record. Their final 26 games of the season, they went unbeaten and put together a great playoff run as well. One loss in the quarterfinals to Muskegon. They won that series three games to, oh, to one. They swept Fort Wayne in the Western Conference Finals three games to none. And now a historic season is a championship season as tonight in Asheville, North Carolina. The Quad City Mallards win the Colonial Cup, capturing their third championship in franchise history as the Mallards defeat the Asheville Smoke by a final of 6-1. to one. So the Mallards have captured their third league championship and will return home following tonight's game. And you can join in in the festivities as the Mallards arrive back home. You heard team vice president Howard Cornfield also mention. Tune in to Q106 for details on the Mallards celebrations as it moves to the Quad Cities as the Mallards will bring that trophy home. The prize Kerry Toporowski is holding there, the Colonial Cup. We have a lot of people to thank for this broadcast. First of all, my thanks to Howard Cornfield for making this year possible, and a special thanks for Primetime 2 and their terrific work over the last two nights. You see the Mallards celebrate. They made hockey history this season, but now have also captured the 2001 Colonial Cup. A memorable year, maybe the most memorable year for what has been a great, great ride for the Quad City Mallards franchise. Among the elite in minor league hockey, both in attendance and on ice performance, the Mallards once again are champions. The Mallards a winner tonight over the Asheville Smoke. Chad Power with a hat trick in the clinching game as the Mallards down the Asheville Smoke 6-1 to one tonight and four games to one in this series. And now for Ryan Lindsay and all the folks at Primetime 2, we thank you for joining us each of the last two nights. A special thanks to Iowa Wireless for their title sponsorship of televised coverage. A thank you to Iowa Wireless and all the Quad City Mallards for making this a special year, but for particularly for those of us that have been involved in this great telecast over the last two nights. Again, your final, the Mallards capture the Colonial Cup with a 6-1 win over Asheville.